그것 좀 고민 중이에요. 저희 조가 맨 마지막에 이제 선수가 오다 보니까 오기 싫다더라고요. 저그는 좀 피하고 싶고 거기서도 이제 토스테랑 뽑아주면은 제가 뽑아주겠습니다. 이번 시즌 저도 퇴퇴하고 싶거든요. 저를 뽑으면 어차피 딱 원하는 대로 될것 같아요, 서로. 솔직히 말해서 1차전으로는 토스전 하고 싶긴 한데 윤철이 한번 얘기 좀. 어, 장윤철! 저 뽑으면은 조일장, 김태경, 장윤철, 이재호 될것 같아요. 아, 진짜 죽음의 죽음. 아, 좀 무섭네요, 예. <웃음> 윤철이 형 뽑아주면 제가 나중에 시드권 써줄 수 있거든요. 저는 윤철이 형을 형이 데리고 가줬으면 좋겠어요. 장윤철이 싫다. 장윤철이 싫다. 장윤철 보내자. 이쪽에 좀 청탁이 좀 들어왔습니다. 근데 원래 일장이가 저 뽑는다고 했었거든요. 아 그냥 저 뽑아주세요. 그 종족 뽑아드릴게요. 오, 와, 그 플랜대로 해주겠다. 최호선에 아, 어필이 있었습니다. 최호선! 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 일장이가 저 뽑으면은 제가 테란 뽑아주기로 했거든요. 네. 제가 만약에 윤철이를 뽑아요. 그럼 저 빼줄 수 있는지. 어, 오선이 형못 옮기지 않나요? 못 옮겨요. 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 눈 속내만 들켰습니다. 그냥 지금. 조일장이 네. 영원히 가야 돼요. 네. 아 진짜 이 사람 쉽게 믿으면 안 되는구나. 테란 중에 오고 싶은 사람 있어요. 네. 박성균 D D D 어떻습니까? 알아서도 하세요 이제 그냥. 어, 그냥 알아서 하자. 정영재 D D 어떻습니까? 저 정도면 좋죠. 저번 시즌에 저한테 떨어졌거든요. 영재면 고맙죠. 버스에 지금은 탑승할 만한. 네. 어, 예. 네. 야. 박성규? 어? 독사르? 야 박성규? 어중태가 영재랑 성균이만 남았거든요. 일정이가 좀 성균이 원해가지고 뽑았습니다. 뽑아달라 하면 안 뽑고 알아서 하라면 뽑네요. 진짜 상당히 <웃음> 이럴 걸. 영환이한테 그냥 뽑히기를 기다리고 있거든요. <웃음> 영환아. 네. 이름 빨리 갖다 놔. 김지성이 꽤 넘어가는 거예요, 그게. 너의 소신 껏해. 끌려다니지 말고. 제일 위험한 발언이에요. <웃음> 이게 가장 위험한 발언입니다. 그래서 그건 흘려듣겠습니다. 테란 둘이 장윤철을 뽑았는데 안 바꾸면 어떡하냐. 아 제가 제가 컨설팅 한번 할게요. 저를 뽑아야 됩니다. 서로 그냥 할 만할 것 같거든요. 희경 형이 조금 더할 만하긴 하죠. 그렇게 한번 하시죠. 장윤철! 와, 와, 장윤철! 야 장윤철 데려갔어. 와, 와 이제와! 김태국 디조로 가게 됐어요. 우승자의 권한 행사가 좀 기다리고 있습니다. 하영수가 된것 같은데요. 디조랑 피조가 부럽네요. 마지막 저는 이런 결정을 해야 될것 같아요. 혹시 장윤철 선수랑 박성균 선수랑 바꾸는 건 어떤? 조일정 선수가 장윤철 선수 인간 상석이에요. 그리고 태호선 변현재를 떨굴 정도로 변칙적인 선수. 포스 원래 강자. 핵심. 이쪽에 훨씬 가능성이 높아요. 재범아 너 소신 껏 가죠. <웃음> 아, 난말 듣지 말고 제발. 소신, 소신 파여요 아까부터. 네. 근데 윤철이가 여기 오면 은 무조건 올라갑니다. 저는 윤철이 못 이기고 태국이도 윤철이 못 이기거든요. 그래가지고 여기 오면 안 돼요 윤철이는. 지조로 가냐? 아니면 시조로 가냐? 소신이냐 이정아야 여보? 합리적인 제안이야. 와, 야. 아, 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 자, 아, 지금. 아, 소신 껏 했습니다. 이그룹은 표정이 다 웃고 있어요. 서로 아주 행복한 조가 지금 돼버렸습니다. Welcome everybody to another day of the ASL and today I am joined by Mr. Raz. What's up, man? Not much, Naokin. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm excited for today's games. Finally going to find out who's going to round out the round of eight. Do you think we'll have another Terran? Do you think we'll have another Protoss? Or are we just going to have only Zergs in the round of eight? I mean, it's just going to be three minute streams from here on out if only the Zergs go through it, all the Zerg versus Zerg happening. But hopefully, from this group, we will see. We will see a Terran and a Protoss. But Hero stands in their way, and he is a strong competitor, man. Yeah, and there he is right there. Hero, I think he's underrated, actually. Like, whenever I hear players talk about top Zergs, I always hear Sulky, I always hear Queen, I always hear Soma. But I almost never hear Hero, but in the past few ASLs, he's gotten multiple thirds. He's consistently in the semifinals, and I think he can go all the way. He's a really top-notch Zerg. Yeah, he's really strong, especially in ZVP. I feel like that's one of his bread-and-butter matchups where he does like just hyper-aggression at times or can play the macro game. So he, he just got it all, and Protoss have to be on their toes versus him. So... We'll see if he can get through his first game and get versus someone like Bisu. Bisu's got to watch out and be careful. <laughs> he does indeed, but of course Bisu, the god of Protoss versus Zerg, 
You know, Ian Serg's rooting really hard for him to make it out. We'll see if he can actually do it. But in the middle, we've got two Terran players. It's Sock and Mind. And Sock, I know you watched that game versus Mini. He knocked him out, man. Out of all the Terran players, Sock was the least I expected to do so. But clearly, his TVP is no joke. And then Mind, it's the return of him. It's his first season since season 9 that he's made it into ASL 15. And he's already looking really good. Yeah, I mean, first was comment about that sock game versus Mini. I mean, Mini didn't know this season that shuttles can attack, so making 10 of them with no units was tough. But yeah. hey, a win's a win, and you moved on. You know, Sock has made it here. And mine, yeah, mine's been really impressive, man. I mean, that game for someone was a little bit crazy, but he was able to pull it out, and now here he is, and I think he's an absolute competitor for this group. Yeah, I think mind is kind of the... Mm, how to describe it I think he's the guy I'm curious about the most because I haven't really seen him stream that much but I know he's been playing in pro leagues like in the past few recent months Sock I know about I know this guy's a killer TVT if we see mine versus Sock mine needs to watch out because Sock plays TVT like an absolute chad he plays build orders that are Different from the rest, like you'll play Starport Factory, which is my build, of course. But Mind, he looks solid, but I don't know. Hero and Bisu, they're just so good. Yeah, I thought Bisu was absolutely just, as he is always, a staple. Like, his games were so solid. He was so good. And like you said, PVZ, if he gets into that matchup, I think that's something that he will just continue to push through. His play is, like, super standard, but just so good. He doesn't miss any of those timings. He knows when to move out. Like, he's just been incredible with there. So, I mean, it'll be interesting, like you said. I think mine definitely the dark horse of this group, but... Uh, I would love, I'm going to be on Team Eon Zerg here and <laughs> want Beastu to move out, man. I'd love to see him to continue and push through into the round of eight. Yeah, I'm trying to think of who's in the round of eight and how they got there because there's a lot of good players that made it out in second place. I, I forget exactly who, but do you want to get out in first? like, Or do you prefer to get out in second is basically what I'm asking. Let me open up Liquipedia. Uh -oh. Because I know that, yeah. I know that like action sitting in second place, and he crushed it. Sulky. Oh yeah, sulky also. <laughs> so, do you really want to get out in first? And this guy named Queen. You know, you may you may have heard of him once or twice. You know, he's also a second place finish. <laughs> yeah, I heard it. I heard his name a few times. He might have popped up here and there. So yeah, I don't know, man. You may get to that winners match and just be like. Oh. Maybe I'll just go to Wacky Build Order and uh, try to fight for second here. Give me a better chance to make it to the round of four. Yeah, it's funny because now, now I've got the player list loaded up. Jadong in first, JYJ in first, Best in first, and then all the Zerks are in second. Action second, Zero second, like you said, Sulky second. I actually think Bisu should be shooting for second place. I, I mean, JYJ crushed it, right? Jadong's always a monster, and Best looked pretty good yesterday, too, but I don't know. We've got ASL champions in zero in group in second place. I think he definitely wants to try and consider getting out in second, but if you can just make it out of the group, you know, that's really what you want to do, because if you get eliminated, Raz, there's no further rounds for you, you know? Oh, you don't get to play more? That there's not like a fall to losers bracket? You don't get to make come back? No, no, that doesn't exist. You're just out. Oh, so Someone should have told Light and Snow that before they played yesterday. <laughs> they Someone should have made them aware. Oh man, I was so sad about that because it seems like this season all my predictions have gotten jinxed. Like I'm going into the first series of all of ASL, I'm like, there's no way that Mini's going to get eliminated, and then he loses. And then, a few groups later, I'm like, well, Royal's the massive favorite, he gets eliminated. So, you know what I did yesterday? I was like, you know what, I'm not even going to give my predictions, because they're just going to get eliminated. So I didn't, and then my pick still got eliminated. Snow and Light, I had them going out first and second easily. Actually, Snow was my pick to go the distance. I thought, this could be his season, man. He's always so good, but he never makes it there. But <laughs> then he got crushed. Yeah, he was looking so sharp. And then uh, those games yesterday, just too tough, man. And then uh, this is ASL, right? This is the best of the best. You have a little bit of an off day, off couple games, and you're out of there. See you later. So Snow melted. He's done.
over for him. Unbelievable. Well, did you catch that 76 game? I did not. That was one of the games I did not get to watch yesterday. Well, that was probably game of the tournament yesterday. That was a crazy game. 40 minutes of non-stop drops. We had race. We had a carrier switch at like the 35 minute mark. It was it was wild. Oh my god. I, I know we've been waiting for that map to be to be played. <laughs> so it, I'm glad that it lived up to all the hype. Yeah, and what's funny is I think it was not banned by light and Originally, I was like, why would you not ban this as a Terran? But then I started thinking about all of his games on Ringing Bloom from a few seasons ago and him streaming his games on Ringing Bloom. And I remember him beating with beating Bisu with Marine Medic Wraith. And I was like, oh my god, we're going to see it. We're going to see it in an actual ASL. He did pull out the Wraith, but no Marine Medic. But it was quite the epic game yesterday. Really came down to the wire at the very end. Yeah, I mean, that map is crazy. I think there's a reason the players are banning it, but it seemed like you know, if there was a player who had a plan, it was like, I can play this map. It's light, right? Like that guy, just just incredible. He's like, I got a plan. I'll take anyone out on this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it get through. Maybe he knows some of the other pros are not practicing that one as much because it is has been banned so much. He had the insider scoop. Yeah, I think so. I, I did cast a, another game of him on 76 for StarCast TV on the YouTube channel. And mm, TVZ looked pretty brutal because what Hero did was he literally, yeah, it was Hero? It was Hero. Yeah, Hero just built like seven Hydras and just stood outside of his ramp at his main. And the Marines came down one at a time. He just one shot at everything. Like, you couldn't stem down because you're just getting killed so fast. Medic, you couldn't lead with because it was just getting killed. <laughs> Light looked like a deer in headlights in that TVZ. It may have been his first 76 game he'd ever played, but clearly yesterday he had improved a lot, and I am looking forward to see if we can get another one. I think we may actually see Sock get us a TVT on there if that happens with mine, but other than that, I think the rest of the players are probably going to avoid it. Yeah, I would imagine so. It's, it's such an awkward map, like with that ramp, the way it goes down, the bases you're going to take. <laughs> I mean, you would think like, oh, hey, carrier play, right? Like getting a two base carrier, but a Terran's going to expect that. They're going to say, all right, yeah, this is probably what you're going to do. And then a player like Light, who's not afraid to go Wraith, you know, could be absolutely devastating if your opponent's player decide to two base carrier. As Snow tried, right? Yeah. And, and you know, actually, when 815 was a map 15 years ago, you know what my build was when I off raced with Protoss? Try and guess. Oh man, not it was the DT carrier. It was close, <laughs> except it was just one base carrier, no DTs, just literally one base carrier, man. It was it's strong because you have that tiny <laughs> ramp. It's hard for units to actually get up. Uh, the Naokin special <laughs> yeah. got even more special with just having one base carrier, no DT. Yeah, and I've I've been inspired, man, from that PSL game. Who was it? I can't even remember his name, but you know who I'm talking about, that Protoss player on Odyssey, that one base. Oh, yeah, um, it was um, the older Chinese player. He knocked, he knocked me out. Oh, no. Yeah, that was him. That was <laughs> that him. Guy. But he, he, that guy, but he didn't get me with the one base carrier, thank goodness. Yeah, well, we uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to see that map, so probably don't need to worry about that, but... Have you seen any of the Dark Origin games, the retro games? What are your thoughts on those maps? So I think um, Dark Origin gets really interesting. Like I've, well, I thought Snow's game on there, um, where he split the map pretty much and then just sat in the middle with High Templars and stormed over the ledges. I think it makes for an oh, yeah. interesting split map scenario because it's almost like hard to get there. I think about PVT where it's like the Terran can just siege from the middle. Um, we saw the Protoss storm. So the, the maps are interesting because you have to get center control like you can't just split the map on the outside and be like okay i'll sit here on top of the ramps because you can't like you you have to actually can have full map control to be able to take care of those games um dark origin i think anytime there's a two-player map i really think that there's some some crazy stuff can happen uh we saw the proxy hatch <laughs> zvz the other day so I, I think they always add for some kind of different style that we may never see or something crazy that players can pull out to try to get a win so definitely uh interesting map for me 
the ramps, I think, make it really hard for movement across, right? Like the, as they always do. So if players can get like contains out there, I think that's always always interesting to see and how players can kind of navigate around it. But I think so far they've brought us some pretty good games. Yeah, the games have definitely been really good. I actually hadn't considered those center bases on Dark Origin being as hard to secure as you're talking about. But now I'm really thinking about it. Like you said, if tanks or lurkers or storm, just if you just have center control, like whoever's trying to expand there, they're just never going to mine there. So I hope we do get an epic TVP between Mind and Bisu, for example, on that map. That could be fantastic. I think it's likely we'll get to late game because Bisu doesn't strike me as somebody that necessarily goes for like 10 minute bus, 11 minute bus, like we saw yesterday, but uh, best do versus light. So we may actually be able to get into a split map scenario. Can't read exactly what these stats are saying at the bottom, but we did have the previous screen where they showed our first and second place finishers. As I mentioned, it's Jadong action, queen, soul key, JYJ, and I'm missing somebody else. Oh, and best. And we are getting a look at heroes stats. You can see, actually, his worst matchup is versus Terran, which is surprising to me because lately in the past few ASLs, whenever I see Hero play versus Terran, oh man, he's crushing it. He's got the Hydra Lurker Plague on point. He's always so deadly with it. And I'm surprised that he's actually, I'm surprised that that's actually his worst win rate. Flash, man. Probably, probably he's running the Flash too much. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> you know, Hydra Lurk, don't beat that man. Yeah, and here we go. Now, this guy in the group selection was talking all day long, apparently, about getting put into this group. He, for some reason, he really wanted to be in Hero's group, and he got his wish. But look at that win rate, 30%. I don't know if I would want to be put in Hero's group if I was him. So we'll see if this was a good uh, bait by Ma uh, by Sock to get placed in here because, as I, st as I stated, I really do like Hero's shots in Zerg versus Terran. And yeah, maybe he has some special tactics for us. He has something up his sleeve that he's ready to pull out. He's going to let something like 76 get through and pull some kind of BBS out in the middle of the map to try to go up the ramp. Who knows? Maybe he's got something set. I would love it. I think I think he's the guy in this group that might let it through. He's very good with Wraith and TVT. I think that's a potential build that you can all in on one base. So we may see it. Let's look at the map selections and oh, okay, I forgot it's best of one for our first series. So it is still just going to be Silphid. Yeah, I think uh, watching a lot of the games this season so far, we've seen some uh, even crazy builds on here, right? That lurker drop that happened against Royal. Um, so I think we'll see what the, he has in store for us, Hero. But I think he'll be wanting to play more standard. Yep, I think Silphid's about as standard of a map as you're going to get. So let's get into game one of today. It is Sock versus Hero on Silphid. Okay, in the top middle, our orange Zerg. It is Hero. And in the mid right, our blue Terran. It is Sock. All right, now, so Z, TBZ on Silphid here. Do you feel that it is harder to defend your natural from the muter harass, like with turret placement? Oh, I hate it. I hate it, man. I hate that position, especially bottom right. It feels like you can just never put turrets in the right spot. And because of that, we may see a fast tech opener from Sock. I feel like I saw someone, fa oh, it was actually Mong. For some reason, I always get Mong and Sock confused. I was going to say, I feel like I saw Sock rush on Heartbreak Ridge, fast Valkyries, but it was actually Mong. And we know Valkyries is very meta these days, so we may actually see it this time. And that SCV is setting up for a wall, so we may actually have a one base. Ooh, we got the Nyokan wall going in here. I love it. I love it. Starting off with it, mixing it up early here from Sock. Now, can he only play mech from here? Can he do some kind of crazy bio as well behind this? Or can he just mind game him here and put a CC in the base and float it? Yep, that's definitely something you can do. Players like Firebat Hero love doing that. And that's what makes him in particular is so deadly because when you scout the wall, doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be tech. 
you really got to get intel on him, kind of just like Terror is in the foreign scene. You really got to know what this guy's doing exactly. Just seeing a certain building is not enough. And there it is. We've got fast gas. So it's actually not going to be a mix up with the fast command center. Yeah, I think it's good that the Terran players are really mixing a lot of this play in this season, right? Nothing super standard from the Zerg that can say, oh yeah, hey, this is what he's doing. I think with the Valkyrie play, it's added another layer of the metagame for the pros to kind of decide what build order they're going to be up against. Uh, you know, we were seeing 1-1-1 a couple seasons ago, players still playing that, but the Valkyrie, I feel like, really add a whole other layer to everything going on in TBZ. Oh yeah, for sure. And now you even see players rushing plus one weapon on the air. And that means that if the mutas end up going plus one weapon themselves and not armor, well, those mutas get absolutely blown up. So, okay, Zerg does get in. And I think it's critical he got in there to scout the factory. Because like I said, if this is Firebat Hero, this could be anything. So critically, he gets in there. He didn't confirm that if this, if this was more gas, but I think that's still fine, and we actually do see that Sock has pulled off of gas, so it is going to be a fast expansion follow-up. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't use the SCV to try to block the drone a little more and then try to put down the depot, but I guess he's not worried about it. I guess he has his build order set. He's, he knows that there will be a normal reaction, so he's not doing anything too crazy. He said, whatever, just let this guy live. Let this drone live, man, for another day. Yep, and there's the SCV. Gets in there. Doesn't see anything unusual. Now, a lot of Terran players will keep this SCV at the natural to try and body block the sunken colony, and that's exactly what he's doing right now. If he can buy time to get his Vulture out and deny the sunken just like that, the Vulture can actually deal a lot of damage. That's a double block, so catching about five seconds, that's not bad. And, okay, he has put back onto gas, actually. So what looked like was going to be a fast expansion ends up being one fact one port and he's continuing to mine gas okay he canceled his add-on not sure exactly what that's about but okay he canceled to get a faster command center i think he knew that his vulture was still not going to make it there in time with the uh, drone getting a scene when the drone put down that crib colony but interesting here that we're going to the starport we'll use one wraith probably to scout from there and then we'll probably add on either side still the armory after that so we can really get ready for this beauty because I feel like anytime Terran do this, there's this window for Zerg to be able to harass with Muta. Like, you need turrets ASAP before those yeah. Muta get here. Yeah, you know, yesterday Light had a wild build on Nemesis. Like, I'm watching it, and I'm seeing where his buildings are getting placed. And I'm like, dude, that's a barracks. Where's your eBay? Where's your eBay? And by the time the Muta's got across the map, there was still no eBay. Yet, he had rushed Valkyrie so fast that he actually ended up being able to defend with just Valkyrie Marine Medic. It was a pretty cool build. I'm gonna have to try it next time I get on the ladder. And we do actually have the Sock Special, which is the 111 with Fast Vessel. We haven't seen this in a really long time. However, this is not defensive Hydras. This is just two Hatch Hydra Raz, and Speed's gonna be kicking in in just a second, and the Vulture missed almost all of them. Oh man, is there going to be enough time for Sock to respond here with anything? I mean, he has two Marines, SCVs, and a Vulture. I mean, is, oh. are we going to see an end here? Oh my goodness. Vulture goes down really quickly. He doesn't defend. We're going to have to pull the boys. Yeah, he's got to pull the boys right now. Look at this double bunker. Bunker in his main and at the natural. But there's eight Hydras. Uh, Wraith is not exactly the best unit to attack ground. I don't know if you know that, Raz. So that Wraith is already blasted out of the air. And he's going to have to run away. And this might be a canceled command center. Look how close it was to being finished. Oh my god, man. This is serious critical damage here from Hero. Like we said before, he can be super aggressive and he it is paying off right now. Two bunkers, Wraith down. Sock has no units, man. Yeah, I think that he's in a world of hurt. Now he's probably kicking himself about not getting that add-on because he could have been able to build a tank. Now he's got to wait for it to complete, then build a tank, and his command center is canceled, so there's no way to save it now. Vessel's out. He's even rushing what is probably Siege, and that is such an expensive upgrade. Oh, man. Yeah, that, I would say with the, the Vessel, you're really hoping for to play against Muta, right? Like, you want to be able to radiate the Muta. Now we have all these Hydra. Like, that Vessel value goes down so much to radiate one Hydra. Like, he's going to need this tank, and he's got to really stall this game out. 
Yeah, he loses a depot. It may even lose a second depot. Even if he doesn't lose the second depot, he's pulled eight SCVs to save it. So that's just so much mining time that's lost. To be fair, though, Hydra... I mean, Hero did build, like, 13 Hydralis. That's a pretty big commitment. So he it has hurt his eco quite a lot but he's transitioning out of it we've got the third hatch coming down we've got the spire coming down wraith desperately needs to find this yeah he's gonna get a full scout here with this wraith that's really good from sock want to see what you're up against as the game is going on is this guy gonna try to bust you and, and you never can expand but sees the spire sees the third hatchery sees that hero is transitioning out a little bit oh no this race about to get sniped oh no another kill for these hydra and I think Sock's doing exactly what you should do in this situation. If you try and expand, it's going to be a nightmare. You're going to just be so far behind. Oh, no. Did he cancel his racks? What's Okay, I guess he's canceling it to build some turrets because the Mutalisks are coming. Yeah, I feel like he's been kind of on the back foot here the entire time, canceling things, changing his mind on what he wants to do. Not sure what's other than the Wraith saw the spire so this time he's able to see the muter coming but we even cancel that add-on like you said before i feel like socks a little bit all over the place right now on what he actually has desired his build to be yeah here come the mutilus there is double vessel but you can see that the science facility is still upgrading so irradiate not on the table at least not just yet that's just a single turret one over there the turret placement is actually pretty darn good the mutas do absolutely no damage but the mutas do poke in and see stim is being upgraded and also saw the second rack so he knows this is just a one base play yeah i feel like for heroes seeing this stuff now right he just transitions to lurker he probably can even play hydra lurk at some point here and use the muta to snipe tanks and Ooh. hoping to chain oh first the radiate goes down but immediate split here from hero yep immediate split so it really doesn't do that much damage the mutas confirming the tank count he still sees it's only one so actually the pushing power of sock is not that strong right now, but that's another... Okay, he double irradiated, man. He just used both of his irradiates. That is a big mistake. Oh, my God. I thought he irradiated two different Muta, but we are, I was wrong. He just got one. Now, we know Hydra are not great versus Biotank. Solo, they do not, not do well. So maybe Sock has a little bit of a timing here to push out and be able to bust Hero right now. Yeah, we did see a drone cycle. So, like you said, if Sock goes right now maybe he can make some magic happen but he's got to go i did see that the academy's still spinning or still blinking so there's oh my gosh oh my god the vessels i actually don't think that's that big of a deal simply because sock already used all of his energy but if there are hold position lurkers then all of a sudden it will become a big deal yeah and all we see here at heroes natural is lings i mean ling hydra i don't think will kill this bio ball with the tanks man i think that's just too strong it's not a good enough unit combination so hero might be panicking a little bit trying oh and we see the lurkers finally but in an awkward position to help defend well there's not a lot of medics in this army there's only two so stem is going to be dealing a lot of damage to his own stuff and there's the real issue for sock is the flanking lurkers even though the hydras don't aren't the greatest versus marines they at least soak up a lot of hits so once these lurkers hit from the back He's going to be in big time trouble. And with this being three hatch, actually four hatch production, Sock, yeah, I think this is a smart move. You need to get the hell out of there. Yeah, but we don't see a CC behind this right now from Sock either. So he's going to really have to make a decision either, hey, we're going for it or we're trying to play this out. I feel like right now we're in a little bit of limbo of where we need to be. Yeah, so now that he is just backing off, obviously losing those vessels are huge because he could have gotten off a couple of free irradiates like right now for example he is going to siege up on the high ground i th think that supplies are actually closer than it looks simply because the work count for sock is probably just down in the dumps but 82 to 55 generally not where you want to be as terran and is he going to catch him out of siege it is a late siege that is a lot of lurkers Let's go down. we do have two fire bats being heroes down there man taking out all those things immediately uh, the Hydras and the Lynx just soaked up so many hits, and basically all the tanks are going to fall behind this. Like you said, there's no command center, so he's going to get contained by this small lurker force. Meanwhile, Hero's on three base econ, so he's absolutely fine. He doesn't even necessarily need to go Hive. He just needs to build a lot of stuff, and he'll probably 
be able to overpower Sock at some point. Yeah, as long as he can just keep him here and he never expands, the game will end eventually because Sock will just dry up and won't have enough going into the real mid to late game here. But Sock still battling it out, trying to get onto the map here, slowly just jumping those tanks further and further forward with the vessel to get some vision, hopefully maybe picking off some lurkers. But this hero army is starting to look bigger and bigger and bigger here. Yeah, and Zerg did have plus one armor, but I see Sock's plus one weapon just now kicked in, so that's good for him that he's not behind in upgrades. But the problem is, is he's almost being doubled in supply, 82 to 52. Here comes another engage. This time it's 10 lurkers, so that's that's way different than the army we just saw. But we do have a vessel here. The radiate was pretty good. Oh, yeah, out of siege. I, I like the hero keeps going back and forth, kind of waiting for the siege timing slash forcing Sock, like you said before, just to stim over and over and over again. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So many lurkers. Yeah, it's so many lurkers. And even though, oh, he just taps out. There it is. GG. And that means that hero, he's already into our winner's match. Well, Sock wanted him. He got him, but could not get the result that he wanted. Yeah, I, I'm I'm looking at Sock's build, the 111. And whenever I think of Hero, I think of Hydra Lurker. And if you're playing a guy that often goes Hydras, do you really want to build 111 into that? I, it feels like this was a a weird or a weird want for Sock to be in this group so badly. Like if this was Queen or if this was Action for example, who plays more normal like Muta's almost every game, I could understand that. But you're playing against a guy that loves Hydras. So that seemed like a interesting hmm, want for him in the group selections. Yeah, and I almost felt like he was a little unsure of what he wanted to do himself. Uh, I feel like when you watch guys at this level, like their build is just very clean. Like they're not canceling things. Like, you know, he's canceled the add on, he canceled one of the barracks. I don't know if that was just a game time decision from what he was scouting, but I think his maybe his build could have been even a little bit cleaner. Um, from what he actually chose to do here. Yeah, what's funny is if the can command center was actually in the main, I think he's in a fine state because he would have just bunkered his, his main and then just floated the racks or floated the command center later and would have been fine. But we're going into a break and we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, we are back and we're going into our second game of the day, which is going to be Mind versus Bisu. And actually, this is the matchup I'm most curious about. And the reason I say that is Mind, he's a former Star League winner. He's obviously amazing. And 
I'm not sure exactly of his skill level right now. I, I'm trying to compare him to somebody like JYJ, who we already saw earlier in the tournament. JYJ, also very good. But clearly, I was unaware that he's actually a god. And I have a feeling that Mind actually might be able to surprise me also. Yeah, I've seen a couple of Mind games, actually, this year so far. And he is strong, man. And he lives up to that name right like he he is a brain user he is a thinker he comes up with some creative stuff to make sure he's defending like you know when that double shuttle drops things like that like he's really good at putting down bunkers and kind of building his sim city where things are going to get blown up so i'm really curious to see how he does here but i'm a bit in the big bisu fan right now i'm in his corner i'm supporting him i love to see bisu make it through yep there we go we get a look at his stats also basically 60% across the board. That's fantastic. I remember in the past, like in the Kespa days, you know, PVT was not exactly Bisu's best matchup, but clearly uh, he has brought it up a notch because 60% win rate versus Terran, that's championship level play. So Mind is going to have his work cut out for him. It's going to be very tough, but it is going to be Sylphid. And overall, I think Sylphid is a pretty darn good map for Terran. Yeah, I agree. I think... As the game goes longer, it is harder for Protoss to find areas to attack. I feel like Terran can really cut off those avenues of like big space and funnel the Protoss army. So I'll be curious to see what Bisu decides to do. Will he play Arbiter or will he try to play something in the late game like Carriers right away? Because Terran, know you want to recall. I know there's a lot of surface area to your base, but usually mass turret, mines, like, you know, it's just, it's just, you know, the Terran know that it's coming already. So yeah. they kind of can set up for it. Yeah, and I remember Light making a comment that Arbiters really aren't that great, so we may actually see some carriers. But at the same time, Shuttleman is a real style. You almost never see Arbiters, and, and instead you just see the mass shuttle play with Zealot Bombs everywhere, Templar Bombs, Reaver Bombs. And we'll see what Bisu comes up with. Ah, uh, man, Shuttleman. Oof. Oh, we are ready, so let's get into game two. This is going to be Mind versus Bisu. Hero already waiting in the winner's match. Okay, in the top middle, our Terran player, it is Mind. And in the mid right, he doesn't need any introduction. It is Take Sheen, aka Bisu. Alrighty, here. Let's see what Bisu opens with. I think uh, one thing I'm always curious to see what pros are going to do is how they're going to open. Are we going to see a standard like 21 Nexus? Are we going to see some of these 19 Nexus with no scout? Uh, I feel like that's the biggest switch we've seen recently, other than Shuttle Man and two base carrier but for the pvt meta of when protoss are taking this nexus how fast because that kind of tells the terran when can i punish this protoss if they're doing these early nexus type plays yeah you know yesterday i think it was best he built a third pylon and like a third goon before he even took a nexus and it was versus a gasless expand i was watching and i'm like man aren't you just mega behind i i, I was really expecting that 21 or 23 nexus that you were talking about. Hopefully Bisu doesn't get behind in the Econ. But I guess for me in the er opening stages is, are we gonna see that Zealot? Because lately when I've been seeing the early Zealot, whether it's ASL or BSL, hasn't really done much damage, but based on that gateway positioning, I think we're pretty certain that it's gonna be a fast Zealot. Yeah, forward gateway here from Bisu, definitely gonna put some pressure on. We'll see what he can get done. Like you said, Terrans have gotten much better with the Sim Cities in their base and had a micro the Marines around the that barracks supply depot little wall. So we'll see what happens here. I was just gonna say I was curious to see when he added his gas, so that kinda depicts how many zealot we're gonna see. We're probably just gonna see one zealot here into a core goo and some pressure. Um, because one thing we you can do is just kind of delay that Terran expansion by having the Goon and Zealot healthy, like not commit all the way with the Zealot and try to fight the Terran in their natural. Oh yeah, I, I hate that combo when they just come in all at once and then you have like three Marines and they're like, oh, well, you got in the bunker, so I'm just running by. And I'm like, Gosu Dark, is that you? Is that you? <laughs> am I am I just dead? <laughs> Are there two gateways proxied with DT coming? Who knows? Yeah. It could be. 
But what's oh are we up to no oh, good? Oh, I think it's just goodness. it's just a sneak or just a fake. A little meta game here from BDC high in that pylon, so when mine comes in he will not see a second pylon and he will have a little bit of a panic attack saying, Oh no, there's a proxy somewhere on this map. Yeah, and versus somebody like Pisu, who does have the ability to do that, you've got to be on your guard. So already I love the pylon placement. We do see that the cybernetics is not spinning. So I'm hoping that Bisu actually delays that upgrade to really sell that, hey man, there's actually a Citadel on the map. Oh, ho, you better build that eBay. But we of course know that that's not the case. And for now, look, Bisu does have the money and he's not showing it. Yeah, some mind games here for mind. Haha, <laughs> Bisu knows what he's doing there, man. Get him wild. I'm really curious to see if he's just going to try to throw down a Nexus as well, or if he's going to actually take that upgrade. It looks like he spent the money on that upgrade. Okay, he doesn't want to delay it any further, especially not seeing a bunker and not being able to scout. Like, you don't know what mine is doing behind this. He could have went a little bit of a two-fact as well, right? So, got to kind of prep a little bit. Well, four Marines, a Vulture. I think this is the exact perfect defense you want, and there's the 23 or 24 Nexus. So, unlike yesterday, not going to be delaying that at all and it is actually five marines so mine's saying nope we're not even going to risk having a micro battle here You're, i'm just going to have overwhelming amounts of numbers look at this scv trying to body block and catch that goon not able to but he did soften up the goon a decent amount and now he's going to be putting down his own command center yeah i wonder if mind was waiting to see for that um range upgrade because there are ways early to punish protus if they take no range where you can keep adding Marines and put a tank out there and actually push them because with no range, the Dragoons and the Marines have the same attack range. So you can actually punish these early Nexus, especially with the gateway out by that Nexus. But I think mine then saw the, the core spinning. So he said, okay, never mind. Yeah, and also mine already has five Marines instead of the normal three. So even with one tank, he's going to have a lot of pushing power. And because the range was delayed, the Goon can't even harass the marines that well right now we do have the first vulture moving out which means that there should be mine upgrade coming in but there's that first tank and there's an additional marine so actually he's gonna go for a push we're going for it we're getting on the map and visu has no dragoon to see this and he's gonna miss this move out and i think that's gonna cause us some problems here Nyokin. he only has i think three dragoons and a zealot and like with the range not being fully done. Oh, no, we do have four Dragoon already. So I, I don't know. Maybe he'll be able to hold this a little bit easier than I thought at first. I was going to say, man, he might have some serious pushing power here. Yeah, okay. Actually, I thought that once Terran saw that it was four Coons, he may back off. But instead, he does commit, and he loses a Vulture pretty darn fast. Didn't even lay a mine. The, the okay. Zealot is soaking up so many hits. Now he'll be able to kill it off. But yeah, those Goons... Not only did they kill basically everything, they also took almost no damage, so that was a great hold. Yeah, I, thought, I think that fourth goon really adds a layer to this push defense for Visu, and I'm surprised mine decided to go for it as well. He would have needed some really good mine hits to, uh, to actually break this. And we see that Visu's like, all right, good, you just wasted a bunch of vultures, you have no mines, I'm just going to take a third nexus as well. That's what you do, man. Like, you committed a lot to that. You built vultures nonstop, so that means that you can't have a high tank count. And I've already got two gates, and I didn't lose any goons, so might as well. And I actually think mine got a little lucky that Bisu's going for this, and the reason I say that is because mine rushed a five-minute armory while also having not very many tanks and also doesn't have a second factory. So if there was a reaver drop in his main, how are you going to kill the reaver? Like, vultures just are not exactly the greatest unit he also doesn't have an ebay oh he does have an ebay there it is i think we also delayed siege mode a lot here a lot of times when because he went gate into robo you can really get, find a timing to actually punish terran when they don't have siege and there's no bunker so usually that could be an ended game if Pisa would have went across the map with his reviews at the observer so i think a little bit fortunate here for mine that Pisu kind of took it easy and just kind of took that third nexus and trying to play the eco game yeah, now the Observer comes in and spots three factories. This is like a really safe opener to try and get your third base. Meanwhile, that is a 630 Citadel in Protoss's base. So that's that's actually slightly quicker than I was 
expecting. So that means that we're probably actually going to have Arbiter this time, assuming he gets that Templar Archive up pretty soon. Yeah, this actually may be some type of bus timing that these dudes are looking for. That usually 6.30 Citadel into the really fast Stargate really allows for Protoss to have that stasis or two for a push timing. Which you can do here if you want to try to block Terran from taking their third, but we did see a third factory go down for mine, so he is probably aware and wants to make sure he has enough units as he pushes out to take this third command center. Oh, he scans and he misses everything. A lot of the time Protoss builds their tech at the top side of the base. Now he's trying to figure out where's the best scan. Okay, now he scans the archive in the Stargate, so now he knows, okay, it's Arbiters, and he should consider building a quick third base because that's really the best counter to Arbiter is just big econ. But I don't see the command center blob being put down just yet. Okay, there he goes. Just going to be putting it on position, actually. Yeah, I'm actually surprised about that as well, Nyokin. You see that he has four gateways already. You know there's been goons nonstop. Or are we going for it instead, oh, Nyokin? Oh, big mine hit somewhere. The goons are really weak. Yeah, this is a surprising push timing. I'm, like, getting thoughts of... Mihu in BSL, where Mihu was pushing at interesting moments, and he caught Protoss off guard. If we look at what Protoss actually has, it's really not that many goons, but the fact that now Terran has lost his buffering units, those vultures, I think he cannot push anymore. He's going to have to just stay back in his base. I like how his science facility is already done, so his 2-1 is going to be coming in quickly. Fortunate rally there. We <laughs> see that those goons just pop, and that vulture doesn't get in. Oh man, we soon to see the third command center, but mine is kind of playing with fire for me a little here now. Can being on the middle of the map, the observer is on you. You got to know the observer sees your tanks, right? Like to have four tanks just float in the middle there. If those dragoons just walk up, you're gonna have a problem. Okay, better that he's on this this yeah. third this third base here and actually setting up. Oh, a little drop here for mine as well. Yeah, I've had I've had moments like that where I'm sitting there like, where are my tanks? I, I know I had five of them a minute ago, and then I see you know the red blob or the blue blob in this game just running across the map and it's like oh there they are they're running for my tanks in the center why are they still there i have no idea but this is a great drop into the main base he shuts it down and that's great he's going to scale terran's econ while also shutting down protoss's and that delays also the fourth base timing for for protoss too i think a vulture went to the white right the left side i mean and caught the probe there it is. Yeah, really well done for mine. Good multitasking. Unfortunately, loses the dropship there because this is one big pain on Sylphid for any race, right? It's getting back to your main. So these little drops here are just so time consuming to like move your army or pieces of your army back. Uh, Bisu did set up a cannon to try to block it. So he only has two on gas right now. Hopefully he fixes that since he is playing Arbiter. Yeah, he also needs to fix the mining in his main right now. He's undersaturated in the main, but regardless, he's still up 30 supply. But Terran's going to be on three bases, three gas pretty soon. Just non-stop vulture harassment. This has really done quite a bit of damage. Yes, he's losing the vultures, but at least every time he comes in here, he's getting multiple probes, like three or four each time. And that's definitely worth. Yeah, I mean, this is just... It's always difficult as produce. You don't want to be constantly pulling these probes or, I mean lose them obviously is the worst case scenario but to keep having to pull them away from the vultures and pull them onto one patch like you're just not mining so really well done for mine to really slow Bisu down Ooh, I'm curious if he's going to try to make some type of bus once he has the stasis seems like the Arbiter is not going to be just got out so he has another 40 seconds before he can do some type of stasis and mine immediately scans it he's like alright where are you at what do you got going on here are you coming for me man well, mine does need to be careful because with all that harassment, he has lost a lot of supply and he did scan the Arbiter and this could be a 12 minute bust. If we look at the supplies, it's 115 to 160. This is basically almost the same amount of supply as we saw yesterday of, with Best versus Light and Best just rolled him over. So, and that was without stasis either. So this could be a bust timing that Bisu can exploit, but so far, Looks like he's content with just taking another base on the left side. Yeah, I mean, I think it's hard sometimes to fight up to this third base because of how the terrain is. Like, to send your entire army, even though you're 170 right now, up through that left side, I think is difficult. And we do see Bisu moving to the right. I almost feel like attacking from the right is better so that you have a little bit more surface area or you can push into the gnat. But 
what do I know? He's moving back over there to the left. So we'll see what he decides here. Well, what I would like him to do is move to the left with the units and actually have the Arbiter on the right side. Because every time mine scans, he's moving his units in sync with Bisu's units, but he's not necessarily tracking the Arbiter. And Sylphid, you can recall very easily coming through top right. And also a lot of times Terran skimp out on turret defense up there. But so far, it looks like Bisu really is looking for a stasis. Is he gonna go for it? I this, There's just so many tanks up here. I don't think that's a, a good angle for him to go. Yeah, I don't think so either. Oh, maybe I think you might have called it. Can we see this Arbiter now flying to the top right? This is a really good play here. Early recall on a map like this, fantastic, because then you can assault the third base once it. And here we go. Again, the Arbiter is flying in, and you are right. There are no turrets here for defense and no mines on the top side of this base here. Well, can he get into position? Oh, he lands the EMP, oh. but recall got off before it landed. And that's going to be a great recall, but there are SCVs here that could potentially body block, but the Zealots apparently don't care about that. They're going to shut down all of them. Now, this army is going to get cleaned up. Oh, but if he can get that armory, that would be great, especially if that's plus three weapon. Oh, that's a big, big tech piece to get there. Really well done from Bisu here. He's going to be macking like crazy at home. Let's see if he is going to assault the front as well, or if he's just going to take this and move on. Well, now that I'm looking at how much damage was done, yes, he killed a lot of SCBs, but he killed almost no actual fighting army for mine. And that could be a big mistake because 150 versus 150, Terrans a lot of time win those types of fights. But there's another Arbor going up to top right. And also look at the tank count. That's only half of it. There's so many more just sitting in siege mode at the third base. Yeah, I don't know how you... I don't know how you can engage this Terran army as it comes through down the right side with that many tanks, man. It's going to be difficult for Bisu. He's going to have to really play this a little bit to more of a later game and get more Arbiters or tech into those ultimate carriers because uh, it just becomes more and more split map here with mine. He'll be able to push out, take that top left base, take mid right. It, this is why Sylphid, I think, gets so hard PBT into the late game. Oh my gosh, that science facility just barely missing the Arbiter. Okay, he does see the Arbiter, and the Arbiter doesn't have 150 energy just yet, so mine scrambling to get back into position. At least put some turrets and mines down, but actually if Bisu goes for a recall, I think he's going to go into the Nat this time, but as I say that, there he goes into the main again. Oh man, this, he's going to get on. He got behind, but not a lot of surface here for the it. recall. Oh! Oh! Oh my goodness! Well, I would say oh. that that was that was a pretty big fail. That that recall, maybe the first one was okay, but now definitely not the trade he was looking for. And if plus three was not canceled, oh my gosh! And now he runs oh. through so many zealots to their death. Mind if he goes for a counterattack right now, where there's no arbors with any energy? I think that could be a a deadly counter. I, I, I mean, Bisu just lost so much supply for the recall and with the Zealots, and those Zealots traded for mines. So, mines should be feeling great. I'm surprised he didn't unseize and just move here, Nyokin. Oh my gosh, he kills the shuttle. Didn't Doesn't seem like there was anything on, uh, loaded up in that. But you know, now that I'm thinking about it, where is Protoss' AoE? Like, it's just the Arbiters, which he just lost. I don't think we've seen a single Templar. And Terran, what, I, I missed the upgrade, but he obviously clearly has at least plus two by now. He's 3-1, okay. oh, so three, his one. tanks are really going to be packing a punch. And I don't know what the upgrades are for Protus here. I did not see a forge spinning anywhere, but plus three on tanks is just brutal. Yeah, now this is always the hardest moment for Terran is where do I attack? Do I cut off the left side, which is obviously running bases, or do I go for the Nat, try and cut off the main, and then try and kill all the bases? And we're going to have another recall, but he has the energy, but... Oh, I Ooh, thought he wow. missed. He actually lands it. And I think the move here is to go to the Nat, cut off the mineral only, and then just swallow up the rally point. But instead, Mine's content with sitting in the map right now. He's going to take mid-right, and I think he has the command center actually floating to the mineral only also. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. Zealots leading in the front here, just getting absolutely swallowed by that first round of tank fire and vultures. This is not oh, looking my. good here for Bisu, man. Oh my gosh, oh. so much damage from the tanks. Like the Zealots 
basically died before the first storm even went off. I don't think he even killed a single tank, and there's even more tanks being reinforced. This is like 30 tanks, Raz. Oh my goodness, and with just a couple storm stasis, it is not enough. That is so many tanks. I have chills up my spine watching this as a Protoss player, man. Oh my goodness, what do you do? I was thinking the same thing. Like, I don't know if he can actually stop this army. If he had double Stargate and had like four Arbiters, okay, maybe. But one or two? I, I don't know about that. We'll see if the overwhelming econ for Bisu can save the game for him because he needs to just pump out a ton of stuff and try and hope and pray that he can whittle down this tank count. But look, look at this. He's gone all the way from the center of the map all the way down here, and it's just a pure tank line. Yeah, I mean, that tank <laughs> just stretches. How do you engage this now as part of with just ground units? And this econ that he has now, again, I don't know when it's kicking in. We're still not maxed out as Bisu again. We were not able to remax. Oh, the splits are fantastic also, but the shuttle does live, so there is still going to be Templars available. Oh, These goons are cornered, so they're mega dead. There is a recall going to top right, though, and this could make it awkward for Terran. It also went unspotted. Yeah, we're, we need that energy here. We're going to try to make something happen and try to pull some of this army away from the middle because I don't know if Bisu can ever break that tank line just with ground units here. So, but we are going to get this command center. Well, this is one way you can deal with mass tanks is you just avoid the army and you just try and force Terran to run out of money because Bisu's not under threat of running out of, un, uh, running out of money. Yes, he just lost two bases, but he still has his natural. He's still technically mining his main, and he still has the left side. But now that I'm looking at the natural at the left side, there are no probes there. So really, I would say he's on maybe two base mining versus a Terran that just has this unstoppable force. Yeah, we are not getting out of here. <laughs> we are locked in seriously hard here, so we're going to need more recalls. But like you said, we only have one Stargate that's producing Arbiters. Maybe we finally added a second, but I don't know if we're going to have enough to actually get around the map. Oh, those tanks on the high ground were actually critical for that defense, because looking at mine's main, it's mined out. Natural should be mined out pretty soon. And the third base that he took, you know, that has low minerals, so that's actually mined out also. So there was a real scenario if mid-right got killed off, that mine would actually not be mining. So good defense there with the two tanks, and there's just no, there's no way you can get out. And now mine has snuck over some tanks to the left side, Good scan instantly. That tank, that TT should do almost no damage. Oh, TT there, Naoka. Come on, you know their power. Oh, yeah. You know they got the power, baby. Yeah. They're coming in hot. As I said that, I'm like, wait a minute. TT's actually doing a lot of damage. <laughs> DTs don't let you down. But you're right here, Naoka. If he can recall that mid right base, which is close to his base, he could pull this out, man. Right, that like refugee protest just recall in, just stasis, buying time, because he does have the money still in mid left, and if he can make units out of those gateways, he can eventually bust. Well, mine realizes that, hey, your main base is not really that important anymore because your natural's been killed off, basically. Please. Oh no. Oh. That's a miss Probably. rally there, yeah. and I think actually the supply gap is just too far to overcome at this point. If it was 170 to 150, I'm probably a still still a believer, but it being 120, I don't know. I don't think Bisu can save this base. I think his best hope is to try and counter, but if you give up this base now, you're not mining, so I don't know what you're supposed to do. Yeah, I think Bisu right now in a really, really tough position. I think he's going to attempt to save this mid-left base, but... I just don't think he has the army to do so. I mean, there are just so many tanks. We don't have an Arbiter. I, I don't see how we can do it. Oh. And there goes the shuttle for the bombs. Goliath's right on top of it. Dude, man, mind looking good here so far. And I okay, wow. Yeah, and he's even taken top left. So he's taking bases and I love it. He killed off the important base, which is the natural. And he said, you know what? You can have the main. I don't need to commit that hard. One base Protoss, I'm not afraid of that. So I love how he backs off, just laid a lot of mines. And now he's going to go for the killing blow, try and look for that army. Yeah, and he's going to be able to clean this up right here pretty quickly, I think. We have the Vultures coming in, going to snipe these Templars right away. That tank count is still just so high, Naoken. That's at least two control group still tanks. My goodness. 
Yeah, it's just so many tanks, and we don't even know what's at his rally point. We do know there's a couple tanks at mid right. Okay, it's actually that's actually all the tanks, but still, it's very, very high. And Visu, I still don't see him putting down a Nexus anywhere. So this is his last stand. He's got to get off. Oh no! Well, he got the stasis off on the vessel, so maybe he can get a miracle with. No, <laughs> just no. There's way too many tanks. Uh, I don't think Bisu believes in miracles right now. Oh my goodness, and mine! Take it down, Bisu! Yeah, and that was just stellar play. The recall defense was great. I thought the first recall was kind of so-so. It was it was decent, but really what did Bisu in was, was the second recall. It did almost no damage, and it allowed mine to realize, like, hey, you don't have any AoE anymore. There's no stasis, and also, probably we're even in supply at this point, so the push was just absolutely perfect and i love how he took bases behind it also he wasn't just all in on three bases yeah and i think we've said this before this is the problem with self fit pbt as you go into the mid to late game like where do you attack and then on next thing you know you're fighting in the middle of the map against this massive terran blob like it's just it's just too much and like you said as well no templar like no other no second stargate like how do you fight the terran ball you just can't yeah, I actually really liked Bisu's opener, too, with the fast third Nexus after he shut down the push. I really liked the Arbiter Rush, where if we go into mid and late game, you're likely to have, you know, three or four Arbiters, and that's when Terran really gets scared. But after he lost them with the recalls, uh, that strategy kind of went down the drain. But I, I still like that he had five or six bases also. But it didn't seem like he had enough production on the left side to ever set up a massive flank. Yeah, he, it didn't seem like his gateway count was able to get high enough. Like we were saying, oh, he's got five, six bases. Where was that eco? Where were we putting it into? Because we did not, we were not able to max. Like we lost that recall and we were not able to max ever again after that. Yeah, Bisu had really good upgrades too. He had three, two. So those are some expensive upgrades, obviously. He also went for shuttles and storm, which is also expensive if you're going to be also going Arbiter. So I'm guessing that's probably where all the money went. But we also got to consider that mine did a really good job with his vulture harassment. He was always at the third base, dropping in the main, always running by in the natural. Maybe the probe count wasn't as high as we were anticipating. Yeah, no, those, the vulture raids were definitely really good, and they were all over the map, right? The main, the third, you were pulling probes constantly. So mine really played well pretty impressive game from him we had a little bit of a questionable decision to attack early but after that he really played the game out perfectly i mean he absolutely crushed it really strong from him yeah it was definitely really solid play and you know what i like about mind is he's got apm that i can relate to he's one of the few <laughs> players that has sub 300 apm you know he's not somebody like mini who's just flying on the keyboard with 450 apm like you can actually go to his stream and actually watch it and be like oh well i can't do what you're doing but i can at least attempt to try to do what you're doing <laughs> it's in my skill set i can i can play like this yeah. maybe yeah maybe. <laughs> it's a realistic goal <laughs> oh man yeah i watch mini play man and i'm just like what i can never play like this <laughs> oh yeah impossible the first time i watched mini i'm like geez louise no wonder this guy's just killing everybody it's because his multitask is just absurd like i don't i don't think i've ever played mini so i don't have any of his replays but i'm sure if i was to load it up in the scr chart the eapm would probably be off the charts probably upwards of 300 yeah, he, he's wild, man. He's just dropping everywhere, storming, so it's crazy. So what do you think? We have a hero mind winner's match, man. I think that's going to uh, be a good series. Yeah, I, I'm a little hurt that it's not Bisu, but mine played fantastic. So I think mine showing that he's come prepared. He is ready. Uh, I know you said he hasn't been streaming because he's probably been prepping. He's, he's looking really solid, man. That was a really well played game for him. I'm excited to see what these guys pick as their maps and what they have planned for them yeah i i'm also curious of the maps and mind even though i don't watch him that often he doesn't strike me as somebody that's like super flashy like i don't think we're gonna get one 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 i i don't think that's gonna be the opener when i think of mind i think of light kind of where he's just gonna open solid builds whether it's a three or a four racks maybe valkyrie since that's meta but probably just 
plus one with three or four racks. We're going to be going into a break, and then we'll be back with our winner's match.
Alright, we are back and we're about to go into our winner's match, which is going to be Hero versus Mind. I gotta say, I was favoring Bisu coming into today, but it seems like I just jinx everybody, man. Mind looks so good, but he's gonna be going up against a really good Terran killer in Hero. After today, the uh, ASL players are going to be calling Naoki and saying, please don't pick us to yeah. advance into the next rounds, man. Come on, stop. Please don't pick me. Yeah, wasn't there a point in time where Artosis was making predictions in StarCraft 2 and he was just getting everything <laughs> wrong? I feel like that this season. <laughs> oh, man. I, I mean, it just happened. Some of these games are wild, but h here we are. We got mine coming back and moving into the round <laughs> 16's winner's match, man. Yeah, and he looked good. Like, it was just super solid play. There wasn't really anything that I'm looking at where I was thinking, oh, you know, maybe he got lucky. No, not the case. And, okay. Bit sad. It is just going to be Heartbreak Ridge, then Retro and Nemesis. And look at those bands. Double band 7-6. <laughs> Everyone, man. That's feel like that'll probably be the most band map maybe ever. <laughs> Yeah. In ASL history, every player thrown in their band. Yeah, they don't want that at all. I think we're getting comparable amounts of bands back to, like, Third World. Like, Third World got banned, I think, every single time, all the way to the finals. But our players are ready, so let's get into our Winner Series Game 1. Okay, in the mid-left... Coming off a solid win versus Bisu, it is Mind. And in the mid-right, taking down Sock easily in game one, it is Hero. So, Nick, I'm curious to see on Harper Ridge what we're going to see out of Mind, because I feel like we've seen a lot of mech play from Terrans on this map that have been pretty successful oh. as well. Oh! Oh, that's, that's got to be an 8-Rex. It has to be, and that's going to be a forward eight racks. Also, this is not, this is not. I'm building a barracks in front of my base and floating it back for a wall. This is, I'm coming for your throat. I want to just rip it out, and he wants to take an early victory. Oh, is this BBS? Please be BBS. Oh, my goodness, the <laughs> uh, I thought he'd pick it on 76 and do it, but uh, the Heartbreak Ridge right in front of Hero's base. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's a fast drone scout. That's a fast drone scout. And he must have a tell. Oh my gosh. He already finds it. This is a disaster no. for mine. Especially since he has a second SCV here. And he shows the second SCV. So now, Hero, he just goes for nine pool. And this is going to be the dream opener. How did he know, Nyokin? How did he know? This immediately scouted that. He went right to it. Yeah, you know, there was a game earlier in the season where the player also scouted this position. If mine had to put it on the high ground, I wonder if the drone actually would have came and scouted it. And this is going to be a canceled barracks. Oh, okay, it's just going to oh be an insta GG. Goodness. Well, wow. the game wow. started and it's over. We are already up 1-0 and that's a bit sad because... You know, coming into the series, what did I say? I said, mine's not a flashy player. I'm expecting standard build. And then he completely threw me off with the with what was going to be a BBS. Yet Hero must have gotten some inside knowledge because that was the perfect counter. I have no idea how he knew other than that inside info. Someone, someone slipped some information to Hero because how do you just send that drone scout to that exact location like that? He just knew. I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know how he figured that out, sorted it out, but wow. Easy first game for him. Well, that means that Hero is now all of a sudden one game away. We've had Sock try and play a 1-1-1. One, one, one. We've had Mind play super aggressive or attempt to play super aggressive. And Hero's just swatted both of them away. And you would think, like, okay, are these Terran players just scared of Hero to play him in a normal game? Like, what's the reason for these type of build orders? Yeah, I mean, everyone kind of just going off meta, getting crazy. Like you said, mine usually known standard, going to kind of just play games out, decides, hey, I'm just going to go for it and get scouted. I mean, I don't know, man. Hero just must be feeling great after that, right? That's got to be in the series like this. You're like, wow, that was an easy first game. Thanks, man. 
Yeah, and these, I, I think Retro's a pretty standard map, but Nemesis is not an easy map, right? Like, mine was really hoping to get a victory there. I think Retro's our second map, so he, I think, was hoping to avoid Nemesis, but now even if he wins here, he's going to be forced to play that. But, damn, this guy on the right, he's got the Killer Instinct, man, and now he is so close to moving out into the, moving into the round of eight, and that would give us five and Zergs. Yeah, man. Zerg, OP, that's it. It's decided here. We came in with, like, what, 13 Terran? Yeah. It's just like BSL, right? Except we don't have 13 Terrans, but still, me who's the only one to survive to the end. It's just crazy, man. Okay, in the top, or in the bottom right position, our Terran, it is mined. And in the top right, in the teal, it is hero. All right, now can maybe mine goes for the mind games, baby, and sends out another BBS because hero would never expect him to BBS twice. That could be a good mind game. It definitely could work. <laughs> I, I mean, a lot of times when people cheese, they do do it twice in a row because it's a great mind game. But if this is going to be your last game in the series, I don't know if you're going to be willing to risk it. So we don't see any early SCV movement. It's not going to be an eight racks. If there's going to be any SCV movement towards the front of the base, it should be just for a wall. Yeah, we'll see what uh, he decides here. I guess he might want to play that. I think you can wall here, correct, with two barracks and the, uh, the barracks and the two supply depots just to be able to maybe take his gnat right away. Yeah. Try to get like a working command center down. Yeah, or he could go for the, the ample wall, which we see a lot actually in ASL. So he'll have like a semi wall. There's going to be like just one point of entry. You clog it up with even just rallied Marines is enough, and you'll be fine. Meanwhile, Hero, no early pool this game. He is just going to take a fast 12 hatch at his natural. Yeah, not even a drone scout like the last game, right? Last game we went for a drone scout immediately. This game we're saying, nah, man, no way. We're going we're gonna to get him standard. He ain't doing it again. Nope, he is willing to take that gamble that there's not going to be any Cineraxes this time. And we do have mine going for a normal scout. No gas for him, so it's not going to be any type of tech opener. And that means likely that this is just going to be command center follow-up. And luckily, both players are going to scout each other first. Yeah, Retro is an interesting map for me. Uh, I think all the choke points do get really tight in these areas. So, like, I feel like you can, as the game goes later, like, the swarm stuff is very, very, very tough to deal with. Uh, I know that in PvZ, this, that's definitely a, the issue on this map. So, we'll see, I think, as this game goes on, if that's going to be an issue for Vine to be able to try to get Hero later as the game goes and fight against him. Because I feel like you can really set up well as Zerg on this map. Yep, and we do have... That's actually a later cast than I was anticipating. So this is going to be the 2.5 hatch style. That was like a 220 gas or something along those lines. Not the fast two-minute gas that you actually see almost every day on the ladder. So this is going to be big eco from Hero. And likely, he'll be taking a third base pretty soon. He may even build a third hatch in his main. Yeah, I feel like this has been coming back into the meta as well, right? These 2.5 hatches definitely gives you a bigger muta count, a little bit bigger of an eco. Ooh, we're going to send this Marine out. Are we actually going to commit with this Marine, or are we just going to pop that Overlord? Mm -hmm. I think he was just trying to force some Zerglings out, but players are too solid these days. They're not going to overreact and build six lings. Yeah, he only builds two. And meanwhile... Mine's playing like I was anticipating him to play in the series. This is going to be fast eBay, which means we're probably going to have a, a three or four racks follow-up. He's also rushing the academy pretty fast also. So maybe not going to be, be a four racks because this is a, a big early commitment, rushing stem and range. Yeah, no bunker. is isn't with the wall, so maybe he's just putting that money into that academy. Wants to get these racks down quickly. Is 3-4 racks the best response to 2.5 hatch? I think it's pretty darn good. I think 4 racks in general is a really solid build. It's flexible. You're not committed like you are with a 5 racks. You can tech at any point you really want. And you still have pushing power. And then with the plus 1 weapon coming in quickly also, 
your Marines are quite strong. And we do have the eBay already blinking. We do have Academy about to finish. But Spire has just now started, and it is actually a third hatch in the main. So for now, if mine can get a good scan into the main and see the hatch, he won't have to actually move out and try and deny a third base for a while. Yeah, I think mine right now just want to play safe, playing standard, like you said. Wants to hit his bread and butter, hits one of these builds really solid, and I feel like so far he's in a pretty good position. He got a pretty good command center timing, should be feeling pretty good. Nothing too crazy out of here either that he has to worry about. We're doing a little dance here. A little Zergling Marine dance in the front. Are you going to push in? You, is there more links here? Who knows? That's a dangerous move. Because even though Terran has a wall and you wouldn't expect Zerg to be building Zerglings, there was a game, I think it was a couple seasons ago, if I remember correctly, Light versus Hero, where Light had a wall and he just happened to lift his barracks, walked out with a few units, and actually Hero was building a lot of lings and everything got wiped. So very lucky there to not get punished, but the ling gets in and does confirm that it is going to be a four rex. Yeah, this ling split was really good. Ma, oh, we see this, Mine got a good scan, he does see the third hatch, like you said, but Hero also got a full scout with this ling. He knows exactly what he's up against now and he can prepare himself accordingly to what's happening here. Yeah, and he sees that it is four racks, so Mind is going to try and get out onto the map. He also confirms the turret timing, and he knows where they are, so he can avoid those for now. He also spotted that the Marine count is surprisingly low right now, so he's going to take advantage of that and try and take top left. But he did actually build a couple of colonies, so that's a couple of drones that are lost for him. Yeah, I'm surprised he decided to add the two colonies. Maybe he saw the medic and thought maybe this was some kind of uh, stim rush. So we want to add them just to be safe, but I feel yep. like a hero with the 2.5 hatch is probably feeling good. Now, is there a turn? Okay, there is a turn at the bottom. I did not see that one at first. I was like, oh no, those mutas are going to get in the sweet spot. And we do see three, four SCBs go down immediately. Yep, yeah, mine's been watching some gypsy games. He knows about the G spot <laughs> and he closed that up real quick. And he also killed a muta. Like he didn't just damage a couple of them. He outright killed one. So that's fantastic. It's also been reset down to six, which means he now doesn't actually one-shot SCVs. So this is a pretty precarious situation for Zerg, but he's still just going to counter. There's not a lot of lings here, so I don't think he can actually get much damage done. Yeah, it seems like he's just trying to pull this bio ball back to base to help defend, but I think Mind is going to realize soon, like, hey, you don't have a lot of units, dude. Like, I, I don't need to bring back this first force. I can just get on the map. Yeah, just now Hero's going to start his hatchery. I guess he realizes he's got a little bit of control with his mute account, and he's kept the marine ball back. But if mine can sync up two and a half to three groups, that's going to be really hard to stop. Also, mine already has plus one weapon, so his marines are going to be hitting like a truck. We're going to go into the main. Turret is going to get picked off. That's nice. Yeah, this seems like a really good spot here to kind of bounce back and forth between the bridge and the main, kind of keeping all of the Terran army back. Ooh. Ooh. That Muta volley did not get a full connection, and that means that the turret is actually able to get re repaired. And I think we saw this the other day, where Mutas and Lings are going to be continuously produced to try and stop this Forax, but he better kill the army pretty soon, because if he doesn't, Mine's scaling into tech pretty quickly, and I think he's going to overrun this army. This is way too much Muta Ling combo, and the Marines are slightly too late. But critically, Mind actually saves all of his medics pretty much, so that's great. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, the army's able to sync up there. Like you're saying, they got together, and he doesn't lose any medics. We so can just produce these Marines and keep on pushing. I mean, every one of these Zerglings that he's making right now is not a drone. So I feel like Hero's eco is probably not as strong as he'd like it to be at this point. Yeah, and mine's crushing his build. His starports are already done. One of his starports are floating right now, so he needs to fix that. But okay, this was a move that I was not expecting. Just straight dive into the main. Clutch repair there to try and salvage his mineral line, but not able to actually repair it quick enough in time. And that means that the mutas are going to start racking up a lot of SCVs, and it also draws mine back into his main so top left still is not under any threat yeah i mean <clears throat> was it worth is the question we got a couple turrets a couple of cvs but we still lost like three muta in that exchange so i'm not sure mine is too sad about it 
and we could see staying on a muta Ling. I didn't see a Hydra Den go down yet for Hero, so I wonder what his plan is to the later game here. Yeah, he definitely needs to start getting that Hydra's that or that Hydra and Lurker out on the map pretty soon. There's a Hydra Den just now and Queen's Nest just now. So even his hive is delayed. So this was really a big commitment to the Muta and Lings. The Mutas do have plus one weapon, but Terran's plus one armor is going to be kicking in pretty soon. And those are the first two vessels. Like this is going to be a 950 vessel or so. That's pretty freaking fast. So he's going to have a lot of irradiates available. Yeah, and I feel like once that happens, this Muta is just going to go down. And we see another engagement here. Good little pick off by Hero getting some good volleys with the Muta. Using the Lings to tank. Well done from him. Yeah, that, that was a good trade. He traded basically pure lings for a decent amount of marines, even got a medic, and he keeps whittling the ball down, which means that Terran still cannot move out yet until a radiate's done. And now the vessel is done, so we are going to have a slight move out, but the, the irradiate is still a couple seconds away. Seems like a really good spot. I don't know why mine is sitting on this bridge here, and I feel like he wants to move either across or back because the mute, I feel like, are getting a really good angle coming in to be able to hit this ball. Yeah, the angles like have been great out. for Hero right now. He does have Evolution Chamber finally coming in. There's an Irradiate, and good split. Minimizes the amount of damage. Yeah, that was really well done by Hero. What a quick split, able to get back on this bio ball, really delaying the move out. First couple Hydra are out, <clears throat> needs to get those morphed into Lurkers, but he should be feeling pretty safe. I mean, I don't see mine going all the way across the map to go to top left with his army just yet. I feel like that might leave him in a counter attack position for Hero. So we'll see what he wants to do, if he's just going to sit outside of Hero's Nat, or if he's actually going to try to bust. Yeah, I think he's just going to sit there forever and then take bases behind it. He's stimming for it. He knows that the Lurkers aren't done. And remember, he rushed Vessels. So there's actually a lot of Irradiates here. He can... Oh, man, he loses one. Like, if he could have irradiated all three Lurkers, this maybe could have been a bust. But now as play, that was really good defense from Hero. Yeah, we saw him snipe a bunch of Overlords. Though. So Hero is supply blocked. So this is all he has right now. He's going to have to recreate those overlords. I think you're right, man. I think if he radiates those three lurkers, he busts because of the supply block. Like, there's no reinforcements that could have, Hero could have come in with. Uh-oh. Oh, oh no. Well, we, okay, we pull those missiles back. Well, we are having SK Terra in this game, and I think this is actually a really good choice because of how fast he got the vessels. Like, there's going to be a, a moment where mine could have upwards of maybe 10 before we even have consume, and you can just irradiate forever at that point assuming he's consistently building the the vessels he's already gotten through two rounds so he should have at least three because we know one of the vessels got picked off and we do have lurkers repositioning on that high ground so here's still big econ on three bases but i think he's going to struggle to get a fourth oh i thought we were going to see a counterattack there but the mind is pretty set up with the vessel and some marines there so um Hero's oh. just going to see what he can pick off. Oh, we're going to get some reinforcements here. If there were more Scourge in that army, I think he needed to take that opportunity to try and catch these vessels. He's still going to not necessarily waste Irradiates, but he's going to at least force out the Irradiates there because clearly Terran really wants to be irradiating Lurkers and Defilers. So overall, I think that was a decent trade. That's so many Lurkers. Yeah. I was going to say, we see more and more Lurkers just crawling around, man. And oh my goodness, another five are morphing at the natural. The Lurker count is getting big. So we better start saving those Irradiates for them. Yeah, but you can tell, the, you can see the power of the this fast vessel because, like, he's just getting free Lurkers nonstop, free Mutas anytime he sees them. There's four vessels at top left. There's two more vessels coming to reinforce that. So that's six Irradiates. And I still have not seen... A single defiler out so there's big losses piling up for zerg and because of that he's had to build like 15 lurkers so far which have done no damage at all at any point in this game yeah, he is just getting trading energy for lives right now so he is very happy mine can sit there and keep ready in those lurkers all day oh or scourge whatever he wants Oh, we going for it wow, now, I can't believe he's actually going for it. I guess he figured he irradiated so many times, like there's no way this guy's got eight lurkers, right? And there we go. 
I wondered what the follow-up was going to be because I did see the science facility did not have the physics lab. So he's actually going to go for a three drop ship play and he's going to try and expand the bottom left. I like this, but at the same time, this does mm, prevent you from reaching that critical mass of vessels of eight and ten. So he does need to get damage done here. Otherwise, I think this is going to give here a little bit of a breathing room and potentially take a fourth base. Oh, he's going to doom drop yeah. left, uh, top left. Yeah, I was thinking that this, I feel like you have to get damage done once you get this many drop ships. Like you have to actually hurt Hero here. If this if this drop fails, I feel like Hero puts himself back in a really, really, really good spot. Oh no! Oh, we're flying right into the lurkers and the Nidus. Oh, buddy, if he fo if he focuses the Nidus, that could be fantastic. But he's got to focus it down, and he does actually. And there's only two lurkers. And remember, the vessels are still oh, here. God. The drones are just gone. I blinked, and there's 10 of them dead. Oh my goodness. What a play for a mind here. Can he bring the rest of Oh, he cannot. There's still lurkers on the ramp. He's going to radiate these lurkers and try to bust up with the rest of it because Hero cannot reinforce his position. He can only use the larva that is top left. Did you hear that nonstop radiate go off? Look look what Hero is going to do. He's going to counterattack because he knows top left is it's donezo, man. So he cannot save that base. Well, actually, he's going to try. He does have three hatch production, and the bio count is actually not as high as I thought, but the plus one armor is critical for Terran right now. Here comes some Lings and Mutas in the back. Is there enough for Terran? The answer is no, there actually isn't. I can't believe it. And also, a couple of the vessels ended up falling too. Yeah, I'm surprised. I think we needed to reinforce that position even more there. I think if he did so, he would have been able to absolutely crush that and pretty much take the game. But now, all of a sudden, we're losing vessels left and right. My goodness. Man. But two more drops is now going to the main. He knows the Muta went top left, so he's going to try to drop top right now. Oh, he was. Oh, to. man. He killed like five vessels and he spots the double drop ship. I was wondering where Terran's army was because Terran was at 150 supply. And I was like, dude, where is it? Well, there's 12 of it right there in the BCs. But the double drop going to top left, with it being scouted, I don't think this is going to be nearly as effective as the previous drop. He does actually get all of the units unloaded, though. Yeah, I think the big part of that last drop was he wiped every drone. Oh, we're going to snipe the Snidus again. <clears throat> wow. Another Nidus is down. Those snipes are critical. I can't believe that this drop actually is going to bust through. Oh, man, that is a great catch up right there. And there's really not a lot of stuff here. The lurkers can't give up the ramp because if he gives up the ramp, then the units that are right here flood in. Did mine do it? A mine may have done it here, man. I don't see how we can reinforce this position. There's no army left here for Hero. He's irradiated everything mined. He's literally irradiated probably 20 lurkers by now. And now he can push up the ramp. Yeah, this is the power of hitting a fast factory and getting into your starport this quickly. You just have so many vessels, so much energy for a radius. And we've got battle cruisers going to the top right, and there it is. Mind, beast mode, and retro, and he ties up the score one to one. Wow, man, what a play from mine. Just absolute nonstop pressure once he got finally got onto the map. He had so many vessels just radiating. Like you said, at one point, I think we heard bloop, bloop, like 20 times, <laughs> yeah. man. We just saw lurkers popping left and right. I was like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, man, this guy's crushing it today. I thought that that was a really clutch hold by Hero at top left, but the nonstop snipes on the Nidus really saved the game for mind. I think he sniped the Nidus upwards of three times and now he has tied up the score and he is now one game away from potentially making it into the round of eight yeah i mean crazy 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 stuff but i don't know Nick. we're going into nemesis from the games i've seen zvt on nemesis it's like really hard for terran to stop those third and fourth bases going up on the outside of the map and a lot of zergs just going right into ultralist after they go muta yeah, the map is very similar to blockchain, and back then, you know, we saw the famous not a bust with the nukes to try and catch larva before those ultralists pop. But now that maps like blockchain and Nemesis now have been in the map pool for several years, I think players are a little bit more comfortable on it, and I think it will be a little bit better for Terran these this time around. When blockchain initially came out, I thought to myself, well, this is just impossible, and that's why you saw nuke play, you know, very... <laughs> 
insane all-ins trying to punish the Zerg before they could get to those Ultralisks. Now, if you're mine going into this third game, right, do you, you went with the BBS and failed. You played standard and you got it done. Do you just continue to hit your build and push through? Or do you get crazy because it's Nemesis? I think you just got to play your build, man. Think about the Bisu game. He crushed him. And now this game, he also crushed him. It's uh, Why would I not play standard when I'm having results like this? Why would I even bother risking getting to an awkward situation where Zerg could get out of control? I think you just play the exact same build you played and just literally irradiate the guy to death. Just nonstop. Just use those vessels, man. Exactly. Just get wild. I mean, I can't believe how many units. I wish we had a count of how many units went down from those irradiates because there, with that top left, he just kept reinforcing with lurkers and he just kept clicking the man. <laughs> goodbye, lurker. Goodbye, lurker. Thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate you wasting all that money. Yeah, and if those Scourge didn't connect, like, on the first three vessels, remember, he tried to bust the gnat because he had so many irradiates where he could have eliminated all the lurkers. And if he had a little bit more energy, maybe he could have even dematrixed one of his Marines if that engagement had ever unfolded. So, yeah, mine really crushing it today. And this is going to be a very intense and exciting final game in our winner's match. Yeah, Hero probably... <laughs> Not the happiest, figuring he'd take this too after that first uh, first game there, which was crazy, but now he's on Nemesis, he's going to have to do his thing, and I'm sure he's got something planned for this that's going to be really, really strong, and he's just going to try to do his thing. Yeah, well, you know, even though it's hard for Terran to bust third bases from Zerg, well, it's not necessarily easy for Zerg to bust the mid bases of Terran either. Like, if you kill off those assimilators, kill off the eggs, well, then really the only option Zerg has to get in there is if they commit to a drop. And when you drop, I mean, you got to commit a lot unless you're going to go for something like a Lurker to Filer drop. So, you know, it's not going to be easy for Zerg either. So they, they've got to be worried that Terran's also going to be on probably four bases or so with four gases. Yeah, I wonder if we'll see some sort of Valkyrie play this game to try to really just deny that scouting deny those muta from taking those bases and mine trying to get on three four bases right away and maybe even do a mech switch something like that that'll really maybe help eliminate some of the weirdness of the map just by having mines and tanks into the later game yeah very well could be the case and looks like the player's break is done and we're beginning into game three momentarily you know in bsl i tried to play the mech switch versus Shao Shui, but uh, that didn't really work out too well. I had a billion tanks, but Zerg had a lot of gas, and well, I did. I missed the muta switch, man, and that is a viable strategy versus mech. So we'll see if we actually see a mech switch game, or will we just get bio again? Okay, in the bottom left position, crushing it today, it is mined. And in the bottom right, in the green, it is hero. So does it being horizontal positions add anything for this TBZ on this map? Because I know playing Protoss, if you play against Zerg, and these are the positions you really got to be weary of the eggs being taken down quickly and them funneling units into your base. Yeah, I'm not too sure if the spawns really matter that much. Of course, he's just going to have direct access to the natural, right? So he'll get there slightly faster as opposed to if he gets spawned top left. But Nemesis, you do have that high ground. So at least you can like put position like an SCV or a Marine there or something where you can actually see units coming in as opposed to something like, you know, Polypoid where you're just... There's just a cliff there, right? You have no idea when they're ever coming in. And mine got a good spawn at bottom left, so he can go for the depot racks, depot wall, and that's gonna allow him to power pretty damn hard. Yeah, I feel like anytime this is available, we see Terran take advantage of it right away just so they can get that command center down faster. And maybe he'll just like you said, use that same exact build and even hit it harder this time. Yeah, there's just almost no downside to this wall. The, the only thing that is kind of awkward to play against is if Zerg does 
what we saw Hero do versus Sock, which is the two hatch Hydra. But Zerg really commits a lot to that, but they're gonna get both depots for sure, and they may even get the racks. So that could be a counterplay that Hero may try and go for. For now, we do see just a normal opener, and it's gonna be the 12 hatch, and mine going for a normal scout. Yeah, it seems like he is going the correct way as well, so he will be able to find his opponent right away, make sure there's no early pool or anything. Not that it matters, because he's going to put that wall up. Yep, in the drone, we'll see the SCV. Oh, look at that bait. Did you see that? He acted like he was actually scouting from top right, and he catches Mind with a massive mind game. And now... Mine's not going to be able to figure out what this opener was. Was it 2.5 hatch? Was it a 2 gas? Or a 2 minute gas? Or was it a 3 hatch? Absolutely brilliant. Wow, I can't believe Hero just pulled that <laughs> drone back down and made Mine miss. Mine's going to be like, what is going on? Did he? Is he top left? Is that the earliest drone ever? Like, what is going on? Yeah, that, that that's a believable scout pattern. Because remember, Hero scouted extremely fast on Heartbreak Ridge. He may have gone for like a, a diagonal scout looking for potentially like proxy racks or something right like that's that's actually believable here so somehow mind has figured out that actually okay i did get juked a little here and he is going to luckily find hero with his second scout yeah, it's so wild players at this level doing little tricks like that and players believe in it because they know the timing so well but now he's finally going to get into the main he's going to see the lair timing here he should be feeling pretty good now that he's in with the SCV. It's like, all right, there's no shenanigans happening. It looks like we have a standard game so far. Yep, in the main, though, this is going to be a very fast academy. So he is going to go for likely a stem rush. Four Marines moving out to try and push back the Overlord or some of the Marines. Well, this is four Marines, and I remember Rhett talking about just build four Marines and attack, man. You're going to get a lot of lings, get a lot of drone kills. So this may actually commit, but... Nope, he does pull back, and Hero was building things preemptively, so I think that's smart. Yeah, no, last game we saw the mine trick where he sent one, and he only really built two lings, so I think mine said, you know what, I'm going to send a couple more, force some lings actually out, no, just free droning for you this time. Going to make you actually make those Zerglings. Yep, and he did end up building six of them, so already good damage done from mine and something he did do subtly which is he moved his racks to the side so now marines and medics can all get through that tiny choke but the ling scouts it so already hero may suspect that hey man is there a real reason you would move this if you were going for fast ebay for example probably not so he may be able to sniff this out and get down a quick colony yeah, we see him poking around with these links, trying to probably get a count on how many Marines there actually are out here. Um, you're probably going to need that column in this base. The rush distance won't be too fast, and right away, yeah, he's going to put down that first creep column and make sure he doesn't die to this little stim rush. Yep, he knows that there's really only one reason you're making your wall like that, and that's if you're intending to push out. And you can see Mind instantly resituates it, and now he's going to go into his eBay. So he's still going to have a decent plus one timing. However, the Mutas are not going to have nearly as tough of a time as they did last game. See a little counter here, but I believe he already, yeah, he already closed up that wall. Really well done there for mine, right? You don't need a counter attack where Lings are harassing you, killing turrets. So just closes the wall again now that he's on the map. You know what I actually really love to see is a stim run by. Okay, I, thought, I actually thought he was going to do that. I was like, wow, really? He's going to try it? He, he's watching the stream, man. Can you tell me he wasn't doing anything crazy? So he went BBS, and I was like, oh, I love to see him run by. Let's give Naokin what he wants. <laughs> yeah. Let's run by. Well, he does end up just trying to force out some sunkins. He got two, uh, two out of hero, so pretty much the standard commitment from Zerg. And behind this, this is a really fast factory. It's 530 factory, so again, this looks similar to the retro game. We're just getting there in a little of a different manner instead of rushing plus one weapon we've instead rushed stem in range but the starport look how fast it is man yeah you already put it down almost like at six minutes which is this, crazy this could be valkyrie actually because of how fast it is and uh, 
I didn't see a second starport. So we may actually have a tank Valkyrie push. The turrets, I don't know how you can get them any better. Like this just to me looks perfect. And look, the mutas just don't care. He's picked off three while taking almost no damage. There goes a fourth, fifth. Wow. This angle is just sick, man. Yeah, it's really tough to deal with muta harassment. That's why you're seeing so many players go for Valkyries because if you just get the Valkyries, it just shuts down you to play instantly and that is going to be the case and we are going to have the tank valkyrie push this i think is what royal was trying to go for in his series but he just outright died to the mutas essentially like we have the exact same racks count but mine has done a better job to keep his units actually alive yeah and a little bit not questionable but i'm gonna question it anyway that top right hatchery why take that one and not one of the mid right or you know obviously you don't want to take six o'clock because it's towards your opponent but the safer third base uh, i'm surprised that hero decided to take that one yeah i'm not sure exactly for the reasoning but I, I don't necessarily think that that base is really going to matter because it all comes down to this tank push like the real threat is the tank valkyrie combo pushing your natural and we do have i thought was going to be a muta engagement That's a, the yeah, that's an extremely fast hive. So he must suspect that this push is coming. Because he did poke in with his Nitas and saw that there were only two racks. And if you only have two racks, what can you really be doing? Like, at some point, you should have had your third and fourth go up. So I think he knows that this is a push. And he's just rushing to Filer ASAP because there's going to be no vessels. Nothing to really take out the Lurkers. First Doctor is on the map. Let's see the micro here for a mind. Right, they need to poke in and poke out. They don't take any hits. <clears throat> that turret oh. does burn down, and here we go. Oh, Kenny sniped his Valkyrie. Yeah, if he had gotten that Valkyrie, it had been critical, but he at least got the turret, and now he's close to taking down or could have potentially jumped on those tanks. But with two tanks out, this could be go time for mine. It really gets scary once you get two, and almost impossible once you get three for Zerg to deal with it. So Zerg needs to get that Defiler ASAP, but the Hive just now completing. So he's something like a minute and a half away or two minutes away from having Dark Swarm. Yeah, we won't have Consume, so we're gonna need to. We see, oh, counterattack here from Hero going into the natural, trying to pull mine back. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I made a bunker. Yeah, he had a bunker, and I don't think you can go back with this push. You've just gotta rely on your bunker. If he was to send anything back, I think just sending the Valkyries back would have been great. But now he's actually gotten across the map, but critically there were actually two lurkers built. And that means that we are, are gonna have a strong flanking potential for for Hero. Tank does get into position. There are five Sunkins here, so it's gonna take a while to get through. Yeah, the question is, will it buy him enough time to be able to get that lurker, I mean, the, the filer actually up and ready with some swarm? Because this is a little bit hard of an army to engage here. Well, what, Hero has done is it makes it very difficult to reinforce this position, so that's great. But the army is also kind of in a tight spot here, so Lurker Spines could be huge. Here he goes. He's going to try and go in before the army sinks up. He's got to go right now, man, before it gets here. Can he actually bust through? The Marines have dealt so much damage. Almost all of the Mutas have died, but the flanking Marines in the back is there. Oh, oh my god, look at that. Complete surround. It gets absolutely my crushed. god. Has mine done it, man? What an attack, what a play, fantastic micro. We saw those Marines split so well. Both tanks are up. He only pretty much lost the Marines, the two Valkyries. Mine may have done it, man. Yeah, there's a reason this strategy is so strong and you can see it right there. The tanks hit so hard comboed with the plus one Marines, but the Lurker had a big shot there. Knocks down both tanks. The problem is, is that there's still Marines here and there's still no consume, but the Defilers are out. So Hero may have barely, just barely held. And I think he did. Oh, we have the first swarm. Oh my goodness, man. Wow. I didn't think he was be able to survive this, but he did. He pushed through. We have these Valkyries getting in there, trying to supply block here as much as he can, but the game will go on with the swarm going down. Well, he's not out of the woodworks just yet because the Valkyries are still reigning supreme. And we talked about does, why why take top right as your third base. And now if mine finds it, I don't think 
that hero can actually save top right. Look, he's still supply block. If there was a base at mid right, maybe, maybe he could actually save that. But this one at top right, assuming oh. mine gets up there, well, maybe he can because this Dark Swarm clutched it. Ling's almost killed the tanks. Yeah, he popped the Defiler oh my again, gosh. and he's been supply blocked, so does he have another one out, or was he be able to build one time again? Okay, he does have a couple out as well, but his Valkyrie's just wreaking havoc. Is this Pros versus Zerg? Oh, he, he's got the Defiler, but he doesn't have any Lings here anymore, so he can't consume anything. So the tank doesn't care about oh. a single Lurker. He's just going to try and barrel through this. The Nidus goes down. Uh, but mine is gonna lose his tanks again. The hero's gonna barely hold on. Where's the Valkyries? Okay, the Valkyries are hanging out in no man's land at top right. We do see another tank, but mind he isn't able to break anything, but damn, he's just killing overlords nonstop. Finally, some Scourge connect and will, I thought, gonna oh. eliminate the threat, but he doesn't. Double drop ship. Oh my gosh, he's just relentless with this. And you know what? You can actually siege on the high ground with those tanks. Oh my goodness, that could... how many overlords have died? I mean, he has to be putting so much money into overlords right now. He has been supply blocked Dude. pretty much consistently for the last three minutes. His Valkyries are absolutely insane. Oh my goodness, is he not gonna, oh, did he get them? Okay, yeah, I was just saying, them. the Scourge get popped again. I was like, oh my goodness, not again, but all the drones are going down oh my gosh there it is gg and hero he's gonna be knocked down to the losers match and mind he's gonna get out in first place what a killer oh my goodness man and he gifted away game one and just comes in and crushes games two and three wow mind did not expect him to come out in first place but oh he has proved us wrong yeah, we were talking about how 2021 and 2022 were going to be Royal and Rush's years, but clearly 2023 is the year of mind in JYJ. Both of these Terran players are playing out of their mind in ASL Season 15. That was so impressive. I can't believe the full 360 surround. I thought Hero for sure was going to be able to fend off that attack. Yeah, Hero's like, oh, I want to squish this army. And mine's like, absolutely not. I'm actually going to surround and squish your army. Like, that was crazy. The micro was phenomenal for mine. He was able to split the marine ball in. I was closer to the natural and then bring in the reinforcements. Just crazy. But, Noken, those Valkyries probably racked up 20 Overlord kills. I know. You just saw consistent red for like the last five minutes of the game. Just perma supply block. And you know what's funny, Raz? Corsair style. When did that come out? Like 2005 or something? <laughs> yeah, way, way back when. It only it only took Terran 18 years to figure out, hey, you know what? If you just kill all their supply, they can't build anything. <laughs> they have no overlords. They have no other units. <laughs> Let's go for it. <laughs> I wonder if he got plus one on his Valkyries as well, man, because those things were packing some punches. Yeah, he may have, because players like Light really do focus on prioritizing that plus one weapon. And if you're ever down in upgrades with your air, in, in armor, I mean, like Mutas, Scourge, Overlords, they go bye-bye real quickly. And damn, that was amazing. Mind just pulling out all the stops in games two and three. Kind of went back to what you said, just played his builds, focused on what he had to do to win the game. Nothing tricky, nothing flashy. That didn't work game one, and he just pulls it out, man. Just solid, solid play. Yeah, and he hit the timings that he was looking for. He didn't get baited by that counterattack. You remember with the Mutas and Lings where it almost drew him out of position? He stuck to the plan. He said, you know what? This timing is so razor thin, I can't afford to waste any seconds with it. And it was executed perfectly. And unfortunately, well, fortunately, we've got another Terran into the round of eight. And for some reason, I was thinking that was actually the loser's match and Hero was eliminated, but not the case. He's still waiting in the decider's match, so he's not out just yet. But he's going to have formidable opponent regardless of who comes out of the loser's match because Bisu and Sok are waiting there. 
Yeah, I mean, going to be tight now. I mean, we didn't expect that mine would be number one. We thought Hero would absolutely get through here uh, or Bisu, but that is not the case. So now these two are going to have to battle each other to try to get that spot. But Sox still stands in the way of Bisu. And we saw Bisu, his PVT was just okay in the first match there against mine. So uh, I'm a little nervous for him going into this next, this, uh, next game here. Yeah, and also Sock, he probably feeling pretty good about his TVP after he beat Mini in the opening rounds of ASL. So I'm sure he's feeling confident despite losing the hero in his first match of the day. Yeah, I mean, Sock, he's done it before. He's taken out someone like Mini, who is kind of crazy PVT, uh, has that unique shuttle style, like you said. We'll see if Bisu is going to stick to this Arbiter play uh, or if the maps will kind of affect how he wants to play. I know Bisu does kind of have every single build up his sleeve. He's been playing a long time. He is a staple of the game. So it, who knows what he's going to pull out against Sock. Um, you know, does a map like Heartbreak Ridge get through or you know, Dark Origin where you could just kind of gas steal? Like, I think the map picks will really play a little bit of factor in how these games play out as well. Yeah, totally. And you know what I really liked about Mind in this series was after he got his BBS scouted, I was watching his face the entire time. There was no reaction. There was no, like, you know, sigh, sitting back in his chair, just stone cold. He didn't let it affect him. Like, he's got the same face then as he does right now. Like, he's not even smiling here, being happy about winning. He's just like, yeah, okay, I got scouted. Let's go to the next game. Yeah, I won here. Let's go to the next game. Yeah, I had the 360s around, you know, the, the bamboozle with the Valkyries. No big deal. Just the same reaction every time. Uh, Terran players, man. I think you guys are just machines. That's it. Just so used to it. Nothing breaks you now at this point. Yeah. Too many, too many times some crazy olds have gotten you. It's just another game. It's just another game. The life of Terran, right? <laughs> oh man, you know I think that's it, it's really you're right though. It's a great point because so many times the mental of a player can be tested. I mean, obviously these guys are pros. This is what they do, but to have that happen and fail so badly at this stage has to weigh in on a player. But you're right. Mine did, did not. He was like, whatever. All right, here we go. Let's do this again. Yeah, I always get worried about emotional players. Like, every time I think of somebody that's emotional about this game, Mini. Like, when he loses, oh, it's it's catastrophic to his life. You can see the reaction on his face instantly. He's instantly sinking in his chair. I mean, he is really unhappy. But this guy, just no big deal for him. But unfortunately, because he got out in first place, now he's got Queen waiting for him. He's got Soul Key waiting for him. He's got Action waiting for him. Who, in one of the graphics when they were introducing Action, said that this guy's a Zerg killer. So, yeah, well done, Mind. And your gift is the best Zerg versus Terran players in the world. Uh, man, I know, like we said, maybe maybe a mind game from Hero here, man. He's like, you know, I'm just going to slide into second place. No big deal. <laughs> that way, I avoid those three. I have a better shot elsewhere. Totally, man. Well, we are getting a look at our ASL event, which is Ask ASL. If you've got a question for the players, you can post it on their page. Probably need to write it in Korean. I don't think I've ever seen an English question asked, but you can use this app called Papago and translate it for you. And maybe you'll your question will get picked. And then, oh, I do remember they were doing uniforms selling, and that's on the Freka page. So you should also consider that out because those jackets, just like every other season, look pretty sick. And we are going to be going into a break, and then we'll be back with our losers match, which is going to be Sock versus Bisu. So don't go anywhere.
are back. We're going to be going into our losers match now, which is Sock versus Bisu. Sock had an unfortunate turn of events in his game versus Hero, and he's looking to improve on that. Meanwhile, Bisu had some good plays versus Mind, but in the end, Mind a little bit too strong. And I'm sure Sock was watching those games, taking some notes on how he can potentially take down Bisu here. Yeah, we were talking about the mental as well before. Sock stating in the pregame he wanted to be in this group, and now all of a sudden he got taken out pretty easily in game one. You think that's going to weigh in on him as he goes into this loser's match, or does he just put it aside like mind? I think he's probably already forgotten about it. I think he's just completely focused on his strategy, and we've oh. done it. We've gotten <laughs> the second time in a row or second day in a row, another 76 game, and it is going to be a TVP. And like I said, Sock is one of the few players that is very, very good with Wraith, and we could actually see some Wraith play just like what we saw yesterday. Man, that's exciting. Glad we get to go into the 76 for the second game. Going to be wild. And in the top right, our Red Terran, it is Sock. And in the top left, our Pink Protoss, it is Bisu. And I was getting thrown off, man. I was like, wow, I'm getting flashbacks. This is the exact same spawns on 76 yesterday. But why is there no mineral patch? And then I realized <laughs> that this is actually retro. <laughs> You're so excited for 76. Yeah, you want it to be all three maps. I remember like three games on 76. I want it so bad, man. Like when Bishop just ran through shuttle with the Marine <laughs> Medic, you have no idea how much joy it, it gives me to watch Protoss just get run over by moves like that. Oh, Bishop. Just scan Stimmon, baby. Getting <laughs> up that ramp and winning. <sighs> Too wild. We do have Retro. This is a more standard map, but I think, as we were mentioning earlier, third base is quite far away. I would say this is kind of looking like the new Fighting Spirit because of how far away the third base is, and that could be... That could make it a little bit hard for Sock to get a third base, so we may see something like a seven-fact timing where he just wants to end it beforehand. And Raz... For the first time, I think, all season. What is Bisu's build? We are going to be hitting that 12 Nexus, baby. No gateway down. Probe's just blinking. Throwing it down. Love it. I was, I was waiting for it waiting for it all of yesterday. I thought we may see one since we had both Best and Snow, but I didn't get it at any point. But today's the day. We have the 12 Nexus, and Terran does spawn. You know, horizontally. So if he gets lucky here and goes for a horizontal scout, but uh, you know that's not the case, Raz. So never, never, ever does Terran find the 12th Nexus first. Maybe he can get lucky here with an end scout, though, and find it second. You know, us dirty Protoss players doing this, we make sure that you guys don't get the first scout. We just send out vibes to make you go the wrong way because yeah. it's already hard enough. It's already hard enough for Terran. We got to make it harder. Well, I just realized that actually Sock has a pretty good build. This is going to be, oh, it was going to be Gasless, but instead he transitions transitions this into the hybrid build, which is like a 16 gas. And now Beast is going to know that, okay, well, my 12 Nexus is really under no threat unless this guy's going to pull SCVs and just only have Marines to support. That's basically not a game-winning combination versus pro-level micro. Sock... I actually am really looking at his camera right now because I want to see his reaction to seeing this Nexus. He, he can't be happy. No reaction. He, 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 these guys are robots, man. They don't care. <laughs> oh, no. Just another, another one. <laughs> the only reactions I remember that are really were crazy were when Flash was playing random and he got Terran. And the person scouted him and they were like, oh, no, he got Terran. Darn it. Yeah, that that was. If you guys haven't seen that series, it's it's versus Rush. 
because there's a game where Flash gets Zerg and he goes for seven pool and Rush goes BBS and they zoom in. Like the camera guy just instantly zooms in on Flash's face and he's just smiling. And meanwhile, Rush is like gritting his teeth, like licking his lips. He's not happy at all. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> but this, we'll see for here. I mean, I'm curious to see how this plays out in the beginning stages here now with him doing this hybrid type build because I feel like if he just would have went with the standard guess, he could have pressured right away. But now I feel like he's forced into the CC and has to play it out, which we know the 12 next. Oh, good micro there from Sock. The 12 Nexus just gets the Protoss economy booming, man. Just gets them on the roll. Yeah, and we've got the Zealot run by, and of course he gets an SCV. The stutter step micro really good and this is a second zealot being rallied across the map i'm not sure if sock is aware of that because there's really not much in the bunker so we may have harassment in the main and also the natural but bisu surprisingly actually turns around despite seeing the three marines there yeah i thought he would go in again even if he went to the main harass those marines and try to get a couple kills on them just to force the micro and the multitask i think would have been really solid but i guess bisu doesn't feel the need just wants Ooh. to back up play safe Oh, I saw that SCV in the center of the map heading towards the bottom right, and I thought he may be trying to hide a third base. Now, that is a very fast army. That's like a 425 army, and generally, you just add seven minutes to that, and that's when your 2 one's going to kick in. So that's like 11.30. 11.30, I don't think Karen really maxes around there, so this could actually be a 3-2 timing. And that's... Oh, that SCV drilled through the minerals, and he gets in and actually sees the robo. Yeah, but I think Beast is going blind Reaver here. Okay, I did not see an observatory, so that Reaver will be really, really fast um, for Sock. I'm not sure he's going to be aware. He may think it's Observer first, but uh, I think we're just going to go right into Reaver play. So. Yep, there it is. And also, with the fast 2 1, he'll have the option to go into a 7 pack timing like I theorized at the beginning of the game. We only have one factory done right now, and with no eBay. Sock's going to be in big time trouble. He also doesn't have any mines, so there's really no threat of potentially landing on something and maybe the Reaver explodes to a mine. So Sock is going to have to be very careful here. I also am not even sure, is he upgrading Siege? Okay, likely that is Siege, but like I said, the, the tank count is just at two right now, and the Reaver's about to pop out. Yeah, and I think we saw why Bisu pulled back that Zealot. He wants to use it as with another one in that shuttle to really get max damage out of this Reaver. The two Zealot um, Reaver can really cause Terran some trouble, especially when we, like you said, we see Sock no eBay, right? No Goliaths yet. I mean, I'm not sure how he's going to not take some damage from this right here. Yep, here comes that shuttle, and there are only two tanks, one at the low ground also. Also no siege mode. Turret, is that the turret ring going up right now? It's just barely going to be... Um, actually, the shuttle did not take the path that I was expecting. He's going to instead try and bust the natural, and that's going to allow Sock to really not take any damage. So, overall, this is great defense. We're going for it. Ooh. Wow, I can't believe he's going for it. This feels like exactly what I saw in the minigame, where Sock held this. Wow, Naoken, I am in utter shock that that's what Misu decided to do here. Uh, I don't know if he thought because it was some type of hybrid build that he would beat it, because sometimes against Gasless, you can beat Siege mode with like an immediate Reaver, and you could bust the bunker and get in, but that wasn't the build from Sock, so I'm not sure what Misu thought he was going to accomplish there. Yeah, it, w it was close though. Like, Terran really didn't have that much stuff, but Protoss also only had three goons and two zealots and a reaver. So, in the end, it at least took down the bunker, forced a few more units from Sock, but it did delay Bisu's build a little bit. I saw, compared to the mine game, this is a 715 Citadel. This is more along the lines that I'm thinking Protoss players normally go for. And the third base is much later in comparison. Yeah, we need to be careful with the shuttle. It's taking a lot of damage, and it's only got a couple rallies and it's dead. Oh. Yeah, the Reaver's also hurt. I think just a single shot could take him down, but there's no turrets in the meme. However, hello, there's Goliath here, and he has range. Oh, luckily, he's able to unload that Reaver. Will he actually get any damage done, though, is the question. Oh, my God. Oh, my he, God. He actually killed something. I think that's worth now. He gets six SCVs. That's great. Yeah, 
man, that I cannot believe that actually killed any of those SCBs in that line as they were pulled. But that is some decent damage there. And I think we're gearing up for some carrier play here. Oh, no, we're not. I'm wrong. We got double robo. I thought we were going to see a three base speed shuttle into carrier. Like, it's been pretty standard recently, but we're not. We're wrong. We're going right for this double robo nonstop drops. Yeah, I also thought we could potentially see the carriers because the shuttle, even if the Reaver didn't get any damage, it would have at least confirmed that there's a third command center at the natural. So you know this is not a seven, one, uh, seven fact timing. So you know you don't really have to worry about that ever happening. It's just going to be Terran taking another base, but not going to be the case. It is double robo all the way, and Sock is slowly going to take his mid right base, but that's triple shuttle. Yeah, I think... I don't know if Beast is going to want to try to bust this third command center, but the power of this build really is as Terran pushes out to take that third, dropping so many units in the main really does cause the Terran some problems, and they have to really move their army, but all of a sudden, next thing you know, you got eight Zells and two Reavers killing supply depots, and you can't make units, so... We'll see what Bisu wants to do, if he's going to go for the bust here, or is he just going to attack the main? And it looks like we are going to see a drop in the main here. Yeah, that may even be a Wraith being pumped out to try and defend versus these drops. But the Goliaths are completely out of position. There is definitely not enough turrets, definitely not enough defense in the main. And critically, because he is building so many Goliaths, I don't think there's actually any vultures at all so there's no mines okay of course it's just always the case whenever you say something as a caster <laughs> there are the vultures and we may have a scenario just like in the mine versus hero game where reavers are on top of the depots socks gonna be supply blocked for a long time yeah i'm surprised that bisu didn't target the armory above him and he went for those uh depots instead because there is an armory spinning right there scbs they're all clumped will they escape Oh, I thought that might actually connect, but it in the end does not. The Sock actually had really good defense for how far out of position his units actually were. He lost not that much. Two depots and just a handful of ultras so far. Yeah, I don't think this was the greatest trade for our Bisu, but we see him loading up four more speed shuttles, probably going to mid right right now. Can he sneak this shuttle out? Oh, he does. All right, so we, the harass continues in the main, and we're about to see a massive drop mid right. Yeah, unfortunately, Sock doesn't have a turret at his natural either, so the Reaver is just nonstop being very annoying. And now we're going to have a drop on mid right, and Zealots get on top of all of the tanks. And now we're going to see Bisu shoot, shoot up way high in supply comparison to Sock because he's completely shutting down this base. Yeah, a lot of SCVs dying at this base as well, and the Reaver is still in the natural, taking out more SCVs. Yeah, this you really is, needs some turrets, man. This is yeah, this is one of those games where you're kicking yourself because you didn't build a single turret, and that may be the GG scan because it was a double scan that went to bottom left and wanted to see both the main and the natural. The SCVs are clumped up again. Can he get that juicy scare up? Instead, he focuses the tank, which is fine because he still gets another kill. The tank, there's only one tank remaining. Look at that! Done it. Oh, D Matrix! Look at the Re the Reaver had 11 kills, man. Yeah, I mean, with as many SCVs that went down, the third base is denied. Bisu's already getting up his fourth base. He's transferring probes down there now, so he's gonna have that saturated. He is really starting to pull ahead. And I was gonna say, I know he has vultures on the map, but will he send them to bottom left? Because if he does, can he handle another attack coming in from Bisu? Yeah, I'm not sure. We're gonna have another double shuttle drop into the main this time there's double turret there are mines set up and there are tanks so this is definitely not going to be nearly as successful oh but the storm oh double reaver drop okay does he have storm he doesn't have storm so in the end he well he still killed two tanks but there's that vulture harassment to bottom left that you're talking about oh where's Lions going down here he's gonna be able to get the shuttle and fly around with it again now naokin Please oh, have a one turret. more glide still there. Okay. Oh my goodness. Down. Okay. I was about to say, if that shuttle got to the net again, he would have been just fried. But yeah, they. So were. I think one thing about this scenario with Proto is they have to be careful. Continually building these shuttles is expensive, and dropping units. So they really, he has to really keep getting things done. If Sock just keeps defending over and over and over, and he keeps losing shuttles and units, Sock can slowly build back into the game. But yes. Sock's not down and out. Like 90 to 123 supply. That's that's manageable for Terran. Like, he's also got his third command center. The command center did die, critically for him. And remember, he rushed 2-1, so that's already done. And if he has plus three coming, 
the longer the game goes, unless Bisu has like double forge somewhere to try and catch up in upgrades, like one more defense, especially if it's a seven shuttle bomb that, that okay. fails, like Sock will be back in this game for sure. Seven sh shuttles, Naokin. Just wild, man. I have a lot of mixed feelings about the strategy right now. It's working really well for Abisu, but we'll see what he can get done with these seven shuttles here. Because I think if this is a failed attack, Sock is going to be feeling pretty good. Yeah, if even if he just has two goons in each, so 14 goons plus seven shuttles, that's 40 supply right there. That's That makes up the discrepancy right now. So it is mandatory that it, this is not a botch because 3-2 Terran with three bases, that's that's a just a ridiculously strong army regardless of how the game has gone and we are going to have an attempted drop at mid right sim city is getting set up but there's not a lot of goliaths here no mind yeah, i think either. these shuttles are going to get in right away oh the tanks are able to fire over the wall and here we go all the drop ships are now dropping all of these units but the Sim City, look at the depot. They're they're preventing a lot of the goons from getting in. The Zealots, yes, they're gonna kill like five tanks. Okay, goons finally get on top of the high ground. Okay, this was still a pretty good trade for Bisu. He kills a lot of tanks, only trades really Zealots right there. And he's gonna shut down the command center for a little bit longer. Yeah, I'd like to see him snipe that vessel. That's a heavy gas unit as well, but we're just taking out turrets so that we can continue to drop. He's back rowing well behind it, but I, I don't know, man. Gotta get, I feel like gotta get more and more done. The supplies are really close. And like you said, we have seven shuttles right now. Things are not that far apart. Yeah, and there's the double forge that I was waiting to see. And what, what I'm most worried about isn't necessarily these trades. I think the trades are okay. But what I am worried about is, okay, we we did take top middle. Like that's what I was wondering. Is Bisu gonna just sit on four bases or is he gonna take more? And he did take top middle. So that is five bases for him. Yeah, we're going to have to play into the later game. I mean, these shuttles are great for the shuttle bomb, especially when we fight later in the tank siege. Uh, but I feel like a lot of the shuttle attack, oh, we're, I thought it was going to be over, but we might be going back in here. Wow, I can't believe Sock's actually going to try and attack. Now, this is a big mistake from him. It's 117 to 174. This is way too much Protoss. Maybe if he was at 130, he could, or 140 maybe. But 117, that's a little bit too far down and he is going to have to retreat luckily he has a really big minefield so he will trade effectively and he's got a lot of goliaths here to shoot down the shuttles so bisu is gonna have to posture back i was scared when sock moved out on top of the mines i was like you know this is a shuttle man right like you cannot siege up or move your units over a minefield because they will be gone from the shuttle bomb for sure yeah, now we're finally seeing Bisu just skyrocket in supply, almost doubling Sock at this point now. Sock, even though he had 2-1, as the observers pointing out, the armories have not been spinning at all for that 3-2 upgrade. And that means that Bisu has caught back up in upgrades. He, in fact, has 2-1 himself, and now he wants to go for that killing blow. Here we go. Mass units being dropped in behind on Sock. Goons coming in the front. I don't know if it was quite enough to bust just yet, but we're still trading some Zealots for tanks and Goliath, so it's, like you said, not a bad trade. We're getting gas for minerals with the Zealots. Yeah, clutch defense there. But as the game goes on, the question now becomes, where does Sock take another base? The fourth base is so far. Even top middle is quite far, and it's a force near Proto, so you probably don't even want to take that. So that's why I like Visu taking top middle, because that's a potential base that Sock could take that is just going to be denied and unless sock does something about it well that's just gonna be you know even bigger econ for bisu who's now on six almost seven bases yeah i like that he is i agree with you that top center base taking that to mine it out as much as you can as protus is just fantastic and i like that bisu has taken both main bases so sock is gonna have to really get around the map to clear bases from protus and I just think in the game state, it's going to be really difficult for him as he goes into the mid to late game. Just the late game, we're already in the game at this point. Wow. Vultures find the exposed Templars, but still not enough DPS. And again, we're walking over a minefield, Raz. Don't do it, Sock. Don't do it, man. Uh oh. Okay, he decided it was against it. I like it. Or else we would have seen another reach zealot bomb potential here. 
Well, unfortunately for Sock, we did see his natural. It's mined out. That means the main is probably mined out also. And this is probably his last stand here. He's got to trade very effectively here. And, uh -oh. well, at least he baited off, baited a storm. But unfortunately, the follow-up storms, they hit a lot of the tanks. But where are the shuttles? There's actually yeah. not much left over. Oh, my gosh. That zealot. Can he get the... Oh, oh no! Diogen! Oh, my goodness. Well, you talked about it. You can't just sit <laughs> on the mines, man. Oh, no. It hurts. It hurts to watch. Poor sock. Does it hurt, though? I, and I felt relief watching that. So many tanks just get blown up. <laughs> no, that's a heartbreaker right there. You never want to see that happen as a Terran player. Oh, my Protus heart smiles, but I feel for Sock a little bit. I mean, yes, one Zealot runs in the middle of seven tanks. You think it's a good day? No, it's not when there's two mines, man. Oh, oh my gosh. Well, apparently that was not enough to finish Sock off, though. He's like, you know what? Nope, I, I can still win this. He's going to try and do it again. He's cleared out the minefield. There's no chance of that happening again, Raz. So might as well try for round two. We're good. We'll push out again. This is playable. Well, here we go. Oh, Just weird. shuttle man moving in. There, and the, the comp of Bisu is not exactly the greatest with just pure zealots. The problem is we're down to so much supply that this is still going to get overrun. And Sock, he's accepted his fate. You can see him taking his hand off the keyboard. And we are moments away from seeing the GG. There it is. And that means Bisu, he is going to go up 1-0 in our series. Yeah, well played from Bisu. I was getting a little worried there with a lot of the shuttle play. We weren't getting as effective trades as it went on, but then he just exploded, man. That eco kicked in. Like you said, he took a fifth base and a sixth and just ran sock over. So well played from him. But now it's about to be the moment that you've been waiting for, man. I'm, I'm so excited. I want to see the Marine Medic Wraith combo that I had been talking about. Yesterday we did see Wraith, but it was not comboed with Marine Medic, and we had an epic one on 76. It was f like 40 minutes long. We had basically every base taken, including the center. I think the only base that actually wasn't taken was bottom middle. So it, this map is clearly living up to the potential here just very exciting games and i'm hoping that this is gonna be an equally good one yeah i mean i think this uh this game will be exciting we'll see what um sock has planned because i'm assuming he probably has something prepped but bisu himself no stranger to weird mass been around the block a couple times right so he should be feeling pretty good as well i'm sure to say hey i got something for you yeah he might have he might have something planned and I wonder what Two center gates? Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I guess you could, right? Like, Zealots are the only thing that can fit up the ramp. Maybe? Yep. I don't know. They're the only pro to the probes. The Zealots are the only thing. I think Dark Templar are also too big. They don't fit through. So, we're going to we're gonna be getting into it here. Yep, and we do have Dark Origin as our last map if we actually get there so we may be able to get into that scenario that you were talking about if sock wins where you know there will be a big con contestion over the center of the map on dark origin siege and storm i'm sure shutting down fourth bases but of course we've got to get there sock has a formidable opponent in bisu and bisu's looking quite strong today Okay, in the bottom left. Unfortunately, that SCV at the bottom is not mining. It's Sock. Meanwhile, at top right, we do have the one and only. It is Bisu. Yeah, I was going to say that could not a good start there for Sock on these, like, stack mineral patches. That one SCV is not mining at all. Um, you can see the discrepancy already in minerals, man. Yeah, it's like 25 almost, so... That does impact your build. Now, yesterday I was asking Eon Zerg, with a mineral patch like this, would four pool be like a, an extremely viable build because of how fast it hits? Is there any build that you can think of from Protoss where this mineral boosting would just give you a massive advantage? I would think possibly 7-7. Seven, seven. Oh, uh, yeah. But I don't think that. We've seen Beastsuit kept his pylon in the main, but you could if you send out that fifth probe, like you made a probe, sent it out, and get a proxy 7-7 somewhere on the map. 
I mean, I know you can't build particularly directly in the center, but that could really be effective because all of a sudden, Terran don't have the Marine count to deal with the amount of Zealots that you could be making from a 7-7. That is true, but you know what else you can get rolling real quick? <laughs> the old 12 Nexus, baby. <laughs> the old 12 Nexus. I have a feeling this could be 11 Nexus. It could be with the boost. Wow. No, we got a 12. Okay. Well, Sock is in for a world of hurt here because that is a 12 Nexus. But it is hard to get stuff to the low ground because goons can't get down that ramp. That means you're going to have to rush Robo. And we do see Sock going into gas. So if he sticks on gas, we may see another two-port Wraith opener. And actually, that did a lot of damage yesterday in Light's game. I can see that being effective, you know, especially not being able to funnel the goons in between the bases and just harassing. Um, but I just, this 12 Nexus, man, I mean, unless you put the factor in the low ground and push that as well, I just feel like it's going to be so strong. Yep, and we are waiting to see if he pulls off of gas, and the answer is, I think he did not pull off of gas. So we are going to have some tech here. I don't think it's going to be a command center. Yep. So this is most likely going to be for Wraith. You know, we did have, what was that BSL Island map? I forget the name of it. Uh, this season there was the no, Island map? No, the Island map in BSL. It was like map, it was a, a map that Abby Love really loved. Do you remember the name of it? Oh, oh, um, the one with the uh, three gases in your main. Yeah. Oh, I forget the name. I can't remember the name either, but that map, you did see a lot of Goliath drops, so we could still have Goliath drop play. I think that's viable, but we'll see what Sock comes up with. I don't see a second factory just yet. Oh yeah, someone in the chat mentioned Sparkle. Yes, that's that's the name, and it Sparkle. is Two Port is Wraith. It. Two Port Wraith, I mean, really effective here. Gas is late, but the goons are just so good against the Wraith, man. <laughs> Yeah, but they cloak, and if you get your shuttle picked off, how do you actually get to the low ground? Like, that's what Ray, that's what Light did yesterday, is he picked off so many shuttles. Actually, the Protoss player ended up rushing cannons for detection, because that was the only way he was going to be safe with his 12 Nexus. We do have the Zealot moving in, and meanwhile, that SCB hasn't really gotten any intel onto what Bisu's doing, other than the Nexus, of course. Yeah, robotics right away from Bisu here. So, it, I mean, devastating it would be if he went to Reaver play. If he were to go right into Reaver play, it would just be absolute disaster for him. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think there's 0% chance that this is going to be an, an initial Reaver. It has to be Observer. I think if he's going to want to prevent probe losses, he's going to need to get that Forge up pretty quickly, though, because the race are going to be coming out pretty soon. We have two already in production right now. The Zealot is hanging around trying to confirm how many Marines are actually being built. Is this going to be like some type of weird FD where you're, you know, unloading with a dropship down to the low ground? But not the case. Oh, there's a Vulture! Ooh. Wow. And no units down here, Diokin? There's the cannon. And this is what I was theorizing yesterday was vultures deal a lot of damage like they two shot probes so if you can sneak one down comboed with rays all of a sudden this entire mineral line could get blown up oh he does not get the sim city and yeah, we're gonna have to pull he's got so much damage he may be able to actually cancel the cannon actually because the vulture does full damage to shields oh, i'm surprised we didn't stay there oh shuttle out is he gonna be able to snipe the shuttle nope he's just gonna run away yeah, I All right, some damage, but was it enough? Yeah, I'm not it, sure. And now how does Sock hold his own natural if we start dropping goons and fighting down there? Yeah, I don't know, but we've got an interesting command center place. He ends up taking the natural, but Raz, natural doesn't have gas. And I don't know about you, but when I play Terran vs. Protoss, I need some gas. Yeah, a little bit. I need to, to mine some of that. Yeah, I, I need just a little bit. Just give me like an extra 100, 200. That's all I need. 
Well, I'm not sure what Sox decision is here unless because we are making a lot of Wraith and we're continuing to make Wraith with Cloak, so that is expensive. Yeah, and Observers, well, they're, they're fragile, but you know what's not fragile? Cannons and Goons. So he's going to try and harass this probe line, but he needs the magic number of five Wraiths. That's when you start one-shotting the probes. For now, he at least does confirm that there's a third base going up, but can't do anything about it. And with him taking the mineral only, I was thinking, okay, well, maybe he's going to start building barracks. Maybe that's what those SCVs are moving towards to do right now, but not the case. He is just transferring to them, transferring them to the natural. And I mean, the Wraith are effective, but if Bisu recognizes that he's just continuing making, which he will, because he now has the Observer there, he even scouts the dropship, like, just making a ton of goons is going to be enough to crush this Terran army here, man. I, I don't know what Sox transition is, but he's got to make something out of it. All right, well, I'm starting to like it a little bit more. I guess you don't necessarily need more gas at this point in the game if you're just only going to be building wraiths. So he is just going to double expand. So he's going to have his mineral only that boosts his econ, and that is going to take a slightly later third base, but that third base has the double gas. So he'll be able to ramp up his factory count pretty quickly. Meanwhile, we do have Comsat coming down. First eBay coming down. So that's going to be good timing relative to the Reaper. I didn't see an Armory though. But I think we should see that pretty soon. Start scaling our upgrades. I wonder if we're going to go Reaper or just Speed Shuttle and amass units and drops again. We're actually going to mix them in there. Um, because one thought that goes through my brain is, right, we have all this gas now as Protus, but... Do you do a carrier switch here at this point when you see all these raid? Like you need carrier probably some Sarah as well. Whoa. That's wow. a big that's a big load of SCVs, but yeah, he's gonna have to transfer more back to his main because he only had like five mining. But yeah, a carrier switch could be already countered by this race play. I personally think you don't really care about the race because you're gonna know that they already had them and you know, you build a couple Corsairs and, well, race just, like, aren't even a unit anymore. So, we'll see if he does go into the carriers. But for now, again, it's double robo. Yeah, we really like the style, I guess. Because that third base behind your main is so inaccessible to ground units, mass drops can really just crush it and take it out. Yep, and we do have SCV spotting. Base being taken at top left. And the scan was perfect. He catches the double robo and he catches... Three shuttles have already been produced. I like how the Rax was floated to the third base to get a bunker up and running. That's going to make it so hard to actually bust, comboed with turrets. And also, if anything even unloads, Zealot's goons are going to be shooting that bunker, whereas they're not going to be shooting the, the critical tanks. So I think that's a good defensive, uh, def defensive position Sok is in right now. The shuttle, Sok is desperately trying to find it so he can snipe it with those six wraiths. Yeah, if you were able to snipe those three shuttles immediately down and they did no damage whatsoever, uh, he keeps scanning them so he knows exactly where they are. But I think that would be some critical damage to be soon. He'd be able to kind of turn a lot of this around and kind of get into the game where he wants to be. Yep, and we did see the armory, and there's the tanks unloading at the third base. So going to be going into those upgrades pretty soon. I'm not sure exactly of the math on the Wraith or shuttle, but I think if you get eight Wraith and then you get plus one weapon on them, you just one-shot the shuttle. So right now we're not at that magic number because race are just at five or six, I mean, and I'm not going to be able to pick off that observer. Oh, I heard a cancel go off. What's going on? I heard double cancel of something in Sox main. Oh, he, he just killed the cocoon. That's what it was. Yeah, the siege fire on the cocoon doesn't want any observer type units in space, man. Going down top left, probably two tanks and the Wraith will probably be pretty effective. But at the same time, now Bisu is starting to move across the map to Sox third. It's gonna yep. be interesting here to see what he gets done here with this drop. Yeah, double tank. The, t the bunker's in a really good position though. That's five shuttles though. How much is of this drop is Zealous? And it looks like the answer is a lot. And there's also a Reaver. So bottom middle is gonna get killed off. Top left is gonna get denied. But Protoss is still on three base. Look at that clutch repair. Holy smokes. I can't believe oh, wow. 
that actually that reaver or that bunker was able to survive so long however the scarab shots are huge and now finally he's going to kill off that bunker and kill all of the scvs and marines yeah i'd like to see sock target down maybe some of these shuttles here there you go yeah i mean the damage is already done you're not going to kill these elves doesn't matter at this point or the reaver just clean those shuttles out so he can't keep doing it but visu had dragoons positioned down the bottom of the map to help those shuttles escape up in the shuttle since they're not dead yet that means that potentially he could save top left well actually the zealots are already here so he can save top left easily and that means that sock has just lost the base while pretty much not getting much damage in return yeah and oh my goodness he's gonna catch oh, the no. dropship wow really clutch play from isu there intercepting that and i think yeah, the Wraith kind of also got reset down to just three. He almost ended up losing that command center action. So well done from Isu. Yeah, and now we're back down to one base for gas mining here. Maybe oh, another that. drop. And there's just, I think there's just too much Protoss here. It, it, it doesn't even really matter what it is as long as there's, well, maybe not. It's only four goons. I thought it was going to be six. You know, he can focus the command center. Yep, he can snipe the CC if he wants. Oh, that's going to be so painful. That's going to put Sock back in the Stone Age. He He's just so he's so gas-starved. Like, every unit he's building is very gas-intensive. The Wraith, the Tank, the Goliath. He needs those gases. Yeah, and Bisu going up to four bases. I mean, he is just... The economy is still booming, and now Sock on one gas, which is probably getting close to depleted by now. Yeah, you can see Sock is shooting up in minerals, but... That's simply because he can't really build anything that's effective with his army. Bisu's almost maxed, whereas Sok just hovering around 100 supply. I think this is desperation here from Sok. He's going to go for a counterattack to top left. There's just so many shuttles, though, and I think they're basically all full. We even have a lot of SCVs being pulled up there to set up probably depot walls and turrets all over the place. Yeah, I feel like Bisu doesn't even need to defend this top left base. He could just drop the main and win the game, but I think he has so much stuff, it's not going to matter here. Oh, oh my goodness. See, Jeff, what a shot from the Reaver. Oh, and we have Storm. Oh, my goodness. Goodbye, Terran Army. Yep, and there's the GG scans from Sock. Unfortunately, it's not his day, and that means we do have Bisu moving on to our Deciders match versus Hero. Yeah, just a tough game there for Sock. Um... Bisu playing it pretty well, defended the Wraith, kind of right into what was going on. So, able to defend it, didn't take any critical damage, and then <clears throat> killing off that third command center was just the nail in the coffin for Sock. Yeah, I really did like Sock's opener with the Wraith. I think it's a good counter to the shuttles, and it can shut down probe lines. But the big drop to bottom middle, his Wraiths were slightly out of position, and unlike Light yesterday, who was able to snipe shuttles left and right, he just wasn't able to, and whenever something like that gets unloaded on top of a base, it's just crippling amounts of damage. So well done from Bisu. He makes it into the Deciders match, but he's got a tough opponent awaiting him. It's going to be Hero. Yeah, Hero really aggressive in the ZVP matchup. Really crazy with the you know Hydra play. So Bisu's definitely going to have his work cut out for him up. I remember correctly, I think, didn't Hero take out Snow 3-0 the last time they met up in the ASL? So you know that his his ZVP is kind of crazy. Oh yeah, for sure. Hero's a killer. And we are going to be going into a break, and we'll be back with our final series of the day.
And this is our final series of the round of eight. Is it going to be Bisu or is it going to be Hero rounding it out? We don't know yet, but we have a lot of Zerg representatives. So even though I'm a Terran, I am rooting for Bisu here. That's what I like to hear, Nook, and that's what I like <laughs> to hear. Let's get another Protus into the round of eight. Um, listen, man, Bisu strong. Bisu PVZ. Probably one of his better matchups. Excellent. But Hero is no joke, CVP. He is also really, really strong. So I'm curious to see what he does because I do know he likes to be aggressive early as well. He likes these Hydra bus timings. Um, but, you know, Protoss have gotten better and better holding it, but doesn't mean you can't account for it. Yep, he's definitely going to have to be on his toes versus someone like Hero. And this is the moment of truth. I'm sad. It's Dark oh. Origin, then Vermeer. But at least we do get Heartbreak Ridge as our last map, and we know that that map can be very wild. Yeah, Heartbreak Ridge, definitely classic, right? But um, can definitely be interesting with what Zerg can pull out on that map for like early pressure. So could get crazy. Yep, and our players are ready. So let's get into our final series of the round of eight. It is Hero versus Beastu. And in the bottom right, in the red, it is Hero. And in the top left, coming off a clean win versus Sock, it is Bisu. So we'll see what uh, Bisu decides to do here at the Gator Forge. I feel like a lot of pros are playing uh, Gateway on this map. In a two-player map, most servers are going to use an overpool. Um, so not as easy to get damage done early with Zealot, but you can just force out more lings with against the overpool. So that might be something that the Protoss have been taking into account. Yep, and there goes the probe, and we're just going to have to wait and see whether he sticks around for that 9 gate. Because I agree, I feel like in ASL we've been seeing a lot of gateway openers. Whereas in BSL we actually saw a lot of forge openers, and that is historic, right? Like, I'm, I'm not mistakenly uh, uh, mistaking him for a different Korean right that did look like Stork there did look like Stork cheering for Bisu man of course Legend's gonna root for a fellow Legend and that is going to be the 9 gate so what's Hero's response gonna be because there's no early pool this could be an 11 hatch wow yeah so Zerg usually don't love to take an early hatch rail time because the probe gets here so early a lot of the times that you could just block it. I mean, he went gateway, so it's a little more delayed than going pylon scout, but if it wasn't, he could have came down here and just harassed this drone till no end and it wouldn't have been able to build a hatchery, but um, this is going to allow Bisu, because it was a nine gate, to get his Zella down here to do some damage. Now, what we're probably going to see is Bisu is going to block this spawning pool as much. You're going to see, yeah, Hero's going to send two drones and build it twice to make sure he gets one of them down because he knows the timing is key. Yeah, and this is the Battle of Titans in their respective matchup here. Heroes number two in ASL with a lot of games played, Zerg versus Protoss. And then Bisu, also number two in win rate with a lot of games played in Protoss versus Zerg, both hovering around nearly 60-61%. We don't have the first Zealot moving out just yet, but this is a low econ opener from Hero. That's a really quick gas from him, isn't it? Yeah, that is a very quick gas. So a couple things come to mind. There are builds where if you feel that your opponent is going gateway, you can get speed immediately and flood lings and run them over. <clears throat> With the pressure from the zealots, you kill the zealot and just go. Or we could be seeing one of those traditional two hatch plays, uh, which very, very strong with the mute all in and just catch Protoss off guard because if they send a Sarah across the map to scout and it dies, the game is over. It just ends. Can't defend anymore. Well, there's the Zealot. I was like, where's the Zealot, man? I guess I lost him in the terrain. His blue color on blue terrain, but here he is in the main. That probe is already almost dead, so not sure how much damage this act. the Zealot is actually going to get done. He does get a couple of shots, the probe coming in for the finishing blow. Finish him. Oh, what? Oh, he didn't get him. Come on, probe. Come on. You got to do a better job than that. 
I thought for sure we were going to have the Mortal Kombat theme play right there, but in the end, the probe is actually the one that got taken out, and versus someone that's shown fast gas like this, I would be very nervous that this guy could turn this into a Hydra bus. Well, we did see the gas get used, but it just came back, so I... I didn't, it wasn't at 120 prior, so I wouldn't, yep, there you go, Nuke, you are absolutely correct. He made speed, I think canceled it, and then dropped the Hydra Den. <clears throat> so he cleared out the Zealot and the Probe now. He's like, you know what, you're out of here early, here come some Hydra men. It just seems to always be the case that Zerg is aware like, of how punishing it is to be late on the ball when you have a Hydra bus coming at you, so... I do think that this could be for... It, it, well, do you think this is like a 973 type of Hydra move, or is this a killing move, a killing blow? I think he might be looking to go for the killing blow. That is a really... I mean, the Hydra dead is really fast. He, he made a lot of links with it as well. He has eight links to tank some of those cannons. He cleared them out, so... I think he might just be putting that... No, we're making drones. I thought we'd already see Hydra be popping out. Yep, so I did see six drones at the natural, yep. no drones at the third base just yet, but we do have Stargate coming in. Yeah, not a super over heavily committal. I thought we would see immediate Hydra just get placed down. Uh, Bisu should get tipped off that something is up. He saw him mining gas, there's no speed, he saw no lair, so he probably has a little bit of a thought process like, eh, hey, what's going on? I think that's why we're seeing this Zealot move out because if you see speed and you saw that there were six eightlings, it's a little bit more difficult to send these zealots across the map because if there's like 20 links out there, you just die. Yeah, and he does branch off one of the zealots to try and get a read on the mid-right expansion. He's going to come in there and see for now there's only drones. However, I think we are now finally seeing the first few hydras get pumped out at the natural. The zealot does get intercepted, but hydra gets spotted at the mid-right position. So... Uh -oh. oh, and he sees it. He just moved his box there, so he knows this is an incoming Hydra attack. Yep, this is definitely going to be, like you said, 973. But getting that drone pull is big. If he could have killed a drone, that would have been even bigger. But Bisu not going to get too crazy. going to add those cannons. Usually, like, the rule of thumb is three cannons per Hydra plus one. So he'll probably want to get a good count of what's going on so he knows exactly how many cannons to make. Because... Hey, Zerg can make five, six Hydra, and then switch back to drones. And if you make eight cannons, you are, like, way behind. Yeah, for sure. So, he, right now, I think he only saw seven. Okay, is that six, five cannons? So, right now, it's a big reaction from him. The Corsair is going to see that there's not many more Hydras being pumped out. Even the Zealot comes in and sees there's not more Hydras being pumped out. So, maybe he'll be able to cancel one of them, but... Maybe not. Okay, I'm shocked that Hero's actually trying to bust this. He takes down one cannon. He surprisingly didn't lose that many Hydras. He only lost two, and now he'll be able to knock down that Forge. Yeah, that's really well played from him. He kills two of those cannons so he can cancel that upgrade. Beast 2 probably immediately going to drop a Forge or two in his main because he's like, okay, you have drones, you're not going in here. I need these upgrades, so the best thing to do against this is double Forge and get both upgrades just rolling at the same time as you push out. Because this is not a big committal now from Hero at all. Yeah, and the Corsair sees that, so he did respond with, I saw at least one Forge in his main. Meanwhile, he's also starting to scale his gateway count. He's already up to five? Oh, actually, there's the double Forge. So five gateways pretty quickly while also going double Forge. He's gonna have a solid 10 minute timing with one one upgrades sure i think bisu needs to keep active with this sair as he will because the threat also becomes down this is why i think where pvc gets so tricky the muta switch can just be so deadly at this point too you count for all these hydras 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 you'll stay in one sair and the zerg's like surprise here nine muta goodbye templar good game so i think he's gonna have to stay active see that there's a spire and kind of just keep floating around yeah, and for now he hasn't found the fire. It's, we see it's at the natural, but this Corsair, I think, has barely missed it. So for now, he's probably not going to be building any Corsairs at all. However, he will see the third gas going up, and that may kind of trigger some alarm bells that, hey, this could be a Muta Switch, or Mass Lurkers, I guess, theoretically, but I generally don't see Mass Lurkers in ZVP. Yeah, now usually that's indicating that 
need to switch here unless he's gonna go like the two Evo, seven hatch, lurker, or hydra, but we didn't see really see much of that from Hero so far because he's had that stare out, so he should know something's up. Like we don't have a ton of Hydra. Uh, uh, oh boy, we'll see what pops out of all these. Yeah, it's Mutus. I was looking at the supply, it was 48 for Hero, and I was thinking to myself, wow, Beast is running away with this game in terms of supply, but now that he's starting to pop out some Mutas, that 48 is going to turn into 60, turn into 70 real quick, and we do have a Zealot move out. That's a lot of Zealots. Unfortunately, Raz, I don't think they hit air. They don't. They can take their blades off and throw them, still can't reach the Muta. Not going to work Man. out for them. Well, here he comes. No speed, but... Bisu, uh, he, I don't think he's going to commit with this. If he does and he loses these Zealots, that's a huge swing of supply. Yeah, he runs away instantly. Yeah, he'll probably split these up and then start sending some back to keep the Mute at bay because he's probably setting up in his main. going to have to drop some cannons, make some Sair. Yeah, just like that. But at least if you put some Zealots into his main, the Zerg has to turn around, but not Hero. He's set up in all locations for it. One cannon in the main with one Sair, but... Not enough, man. The Sarah are gonna absolutely get crushed by the Scourge and the can the Muta will take down this cannon. And this is devastating damage. And now we have to be careful. If we have Storm, we cannot Storm into our mineral line. Yeah, you definitely don't want to Storm the Mutas if they're sitting on top of your probe line. You know what would have been a slick move, which I've seen a couple times in ASL, is putting that Templar behind the Assimilator. Because there was a moment where he could have stormed on top of the cannon, but now he lost the Templar, didn't really do much damage to the Mutas at all. And so many probes have been picked off. Like I said, it was 90 to 48, literally a minute and a half ago. Now it's 101 to 96. Yeah, this is where it just gets so difficult. Like, the Muta Micro is just so good. Not having Sarah to help melt them down, Hero can literally just fly over Bisu's army and pick Templar for Templar in every single move. Just devastating. And oh that Corsair oh, is no. not long for this world either. Goodbye. Oh, look at that splash damage. He killed, he hit the goon, fo he focused the goon and still splashed the Corsair to death. Yeah, this, this is devastating damage. And Muta's in the group of 11 here are just absolutely going to wreak havoc on the Dragoons. Killing them, popping them down one by one, no problem. Yeah, and it would be different if, like, the Zealots, for example, were moving out and denying bases, but Visu's just sitting at his natural. Like, he's just taking it on the chin, and he's not hitting back at all. So Zerg can do whatever he wants, and Zerg has decided oh, that no. he's just going to commit to three bases here. He's going to pick off the Templar also, but we have a supply lead for Zerg now. Yeah, this is just devastating, man. And he is macroing right now of seven hatcheries. He is going to, oh no, he's going to have so many Hydra in this next move out. And we wasted so many storms. We don't have the eco behind this. Abisu definitely in a rough spot right now. Yeah, the Mutas are heavily damaged now. So they're probably going to back off. You need to be careful not to lose those. They, they can have a lot of value even in the mid game. Sniping Templar. So definitely just want to heal those up for now. Meanwhile, Hero is taking mid right as his fourth base. The army of Bisu is quite strong. He's got the 1 1 upgrades. He's got a lot of goons. He's got a lot of zealots, but he's really lacking the Templars. So I think his best option here is maybe try and hold the bridges and take a third base. Yeah, I think he's going to want to drag this out because if he moves out across the map, those Muta are just going to dive in, kill as many Templars as they can, and you are going to see that giant red line of Hydra are just going to run over his army because there'll be no AoE. Yeah, if he wants to get damage on the map, I think we need to see a DT and go into that patented DT sneaking in that Bisu is well known for. Maybe he can get lucky and shut down a drone line and catch back up that way. Because right now, he needs to focus on getting that third base. There are the Mutas, and that Zealot got insta-pop. I did notice Bisu has a decent amount of Templars now, like three or four. Yeah, and they're baking a lot of energy. So he could potentially try and take that third base. In the main, do we have Hive? No, we do not. But we do have double Evolution Chamber. Yeah, I didn't notice if Bisu's forges were spinning either. Uh, I don't see them moving there. Her no, they are. Okay, we have one because he's going to need that plus two armor because once Zerg has plus two attack on these Hydra, the Dragoons just trade so ineffectively. Oh, it's yeah, such a break point. The yeah, units just melt, and that could be a risky move right there. He's loading up Templars in his dropship, so now he only has one or two left over. Of course, he'll be able to mow down drones if he can actually get to a base, 
but this is an expensive commitment. He is going to try and take a third base at the same time, though. I think. Yeah, I think we're going to see Hero go for it here. He's going to fly in with these Muta, pop these Templar, just dive. Right, yep, here we go. Storm's going down. Oh, I don't know how that storm was to the south there, but Templar, don't got any. Oh! Little wow. mistake. Yeah, that was a miss rally, and now there's actually no lurkers. It's just pure Hydra Muta, but the the angle of attack. Well, I think the win. I think Protoss will win this one on the top side, but the bottom side with the Hydra from the high ground. Now we're gonna unload those Templars, and he's wondering where the hell did those Templars come from? They were hidden in the shuttle, and that was a really fantastic trade for Bisu there. That's gonna alleviate a lot of the pressure. Well, he's gotta be careful to not bleed off his zealots. Trying to fight across this ramp, which is always difficult, and these Muta are still just getting so much value. But Beast was able to break out. He killed a lot of the Hydras, so we'll see if he's going to try to push across to this mid-right base or just take a third of his own. I think he really needs to take a third. I don't see how we can keep fighting. Oh, no, the shuttle. Hopefully it was empty. Uh, I say that, Nyokin, but we're going. Yeah, Protoss' army is pretty strong, and the Lurkers are slightly late, but the amount of hydras that he has and unfortunately he's not paying attention to his templars he loses two out of the three gets one storm off but the lurkers are set up the hydras are set up that's a great storm in the back but a good interception there also he gets also another templar and yes he killed the fourth base but he loses his entire army in the process yeah this is just devastating for protus you really just cannot trade your army like this even for one base because zerg is sitting on seven hatcheries and is just macroing like a madman and we see that he's just running up and blocking his goods in i think bisu knows you have the mayor's the gg damn crushed and i think it all just came down to not finding that spire not getting the intel he needed to figure out that it was a muta switch if he didn't lose that many probes you know, he probably would have been in an okay state. Like, his army was fearsome. He had great storms. But when you're down that much, it's just a little bit too much to overcome. Yeah, great build order to start for MBC. Yeah, I got the double forge up, but that, that Muta switch is just devastating. And that's what's so tricky about PBZ, and it can be so fragile, is these little changes in the game state from just mass Hydra, Hydra Lurk, to all of a sudden, oh, there are Muta flying on my base? It just ends the game. Like, you really got to keep that Sarah on the map, trying to see when is that happening, when is it going to happen, because at this level, the Muta Micro is so crazy, they just kill you. Yeah, and he was so close to finding the Spire also. Like, his Corsair poked near the ramp, and the Spire was right there. He was just barely out of vision. He even scouted the third gas. I thought that was going to be the dead giveaway, but when we got a glimpse from the Observer that the Stargate wasn't blinking, we knew he was in big-time trouble. So now we're going to be going into game two. This is potentially the last life of Visu, and he's going to have a good map, though. It is Vermeer. I don't know what your thoughts are on are of Vermeer, but overall, I think this is a pretty balanced map. Yeah, I think it's pretty balanced. Um, we saw when it was first introduced in ASL, the lurker contains outside of the naturals were really difficult. Um, pros have gotten more a little smarter with the Dragoon count. We used to be so many heavy zealots, uh, but gas at every expansion always a positive for protoss and pbc definitely protoss will be able to pump out so many archons templars dragoons you can imagine if he can actually get the four bases that should be a winning combination but in the top right we have that man standing in his way it is hero but he is a living legend in the top left it is bisu yeah so See if Bisu decides to open up a gateway. I think sometimes the factor of what base you get on these maps matters. Whereas if you are top right or bottom left, you only have pretty much a one gap wall versus being top left or bottom right where your wall is a little bit more open because it is vertical. So could weigh into Bisu's decision whether it's a forge or a gateway. Well, we do have the probe coming down. And we'll see if he hangs around for that gateway again or if... He will go back and mine a little bit, and he will go back. And a lot of times, this means that it's not going to be a gate opener, but it could just be going back to get one pull, then going for the 9 or 10 gate. And we do actually have a 9 pull nine from Hero here, and it is going to be the gate opener since the probe is already back. <clears throat> yeah, he's going to have to recognize this and add a forge pretty much immediately to hold. And then we are going to be, hopefully he'll scout mid-left for the Overlord and then go top right. Um, 
because if you don't recognize this early enough and you send your zealot out and it gets caught, um, it's you just can die. Yeah, so he's gonna be have to be on his guard. We saw the mid left scout to find the overlord doesn't see it, so now he's gonna hook around to top right and he's gonna get lucky here and find hero first so he will be able to have the intel and react appropriately yeah i would imagine he will put a fort down unless he's gonna try to get tricky with it and use the zealot and some probes to fight at the at the natural but usually versus a nine pool you do want to drop that forge to be extra safe because if you get four or five lings in your base it's just <laughs> devastating these are early Things are so difficult, PBZ. Yep, and he... Did he actually poke in and see it? I think at this point, right, you can just figure out, like, hey, like there should have been a hatchery here, or there should have been a drone so, here. So he sees the lings, and now he knows. And no hatchery and no overlord. Second overlord flying anywhere yet is usually the indicator. Like, oh, this is a little bit weird. Okay. So we'll see. Uh, the other probe is coming down now, so I think he will put down this forge. Or he won't. Wait, what? Okay, he's got a pylon, but that's a double gap right there. I would say, luckily for him, there there weren't six lings initially, so he wasn't really under threat of getting hit at the top side and the bottom side. But yeah, we've got a micro battle going on. Oh my gosh, a full surround, and this is a disaster. Oh my goodness. He, oh, we pulled it out, though. I'm shocked we even got that much. <clears throat> This is, uh, this is what I was talking about here. The next three lings in the main. Oh, one probe already dead. Yeah. I'm worried for these two. Unfortunately, letting three Zerglings in could be catastrophic. He's going to almost lose another probe. Can he save it? Oh! Whoa. He got baited wow. in there and loses two of the lings. So, Naoki, what this usually is for Protoss when you add that third pylon is meaning you're gonna non-stop produce zealots. That way you can get more zealots on the map and force Zerg to continue to make Zergling instead of drones and kind of punish that low eco nine pool. So I think we're gonna see Bisu continue to rally zealots over, continue to make them until the Zergling numbers are too overwhelming coming from two or three hatches and then we'll go retreat behind our wall. Well, I'm seeing that heroes not necessarily supply block, but he hasn't used that larva at the third base yet. Now he is. And he does have what seemed to me to be a relatively quick lair already coming up. I don't think we saw cybernetics anywhere just yet. That's probably it right there. So, and I don't yeah. think the lair got spotted either. So, Bisu's going to need to sniff this out. <laughs> yeah, lair up. Uh, I don't know if it'll be looking to punish with Muta or if he's just going to get that spire ASAP and get Scourge up, but very low eco play here from hero so i'm assuming he's going to want to have to do some damage i mean we're not using our larva i guess well we are supply block so yeah just now coming out of the supply block and i think that the lair is about to finish the spire should be coming down pretty soon meanwhile that third base is really not really doing much for hero at all it's not mining at all all it's really giving him is a little bit of extra larva he at least or at least Bisu confirms that more lanes were being built. Yeah, Bisu's got to be a little nervous. There's no speed. There's no drones. Like, is this guy just massling all inning, but with no speed? Like, what, what's going on here? Like, this, this should really look odd to him right now. Like, something he should recognize something is up. Like, where did this guy's gas go? Because he has to have gas by now. Yeah, I'm surprised that he's actually attacking into this when he saw that there were four lings being built at the third base, but here he comes, and I think Zerg is going to win this fight pretty easily. This seems like an overwhelming amount of Zerglings, but, the, well, the Zealots did a little bit better than I thought, but yeah, the Zealot count is going to be completely reset, and that's going to allow Zerg to start droning that third base, finally. We need to block here, Naokin. We need to block, because, oh, never mind, he split up his lings. I'll say, if ten lings survive that attack and just flood in they will run by that one cannon like that they do not care that there's one cannon there oh yeah for sure and he does catch the zealot so that's going to be like six or seven zealots that he's killed off and what seemed like a great opener for bisu now supplies are pretty darn close 45 to 33 you know the spire is about to finish the first sarah's out though so he's going to get some knowledge of this 
And we saw plus one spinning for air weapons for a beast. So I think we're going to see more of a standard Sarah Zella type game from him. Um, but Hero already going into the five hatcheries. So he'll, his economy and drone count will all of a sudden pump up a ton because there are no Zealots to kill it. So what are we worried about? Yeah, I don't think he's really worried at all. Also, it's not often you see Protoss going into like a fast third or fourth gate. So there, it's just going to be one Zealot at a time. So you have like all day to rebuild your drone count and still be fine so i think right now both players are just going to power for now you can see bisu not skimping out on corsairs this time he's got three coming already yeah he learned from last game he wants to make sure no muter gonna do any damage <clears throat> but second gas down now we see some scourge coming out i don't think we're gonna see too many muter maybe we'll see like five to harass a little bit but i don't know if we're gonna see an over committal here from hero yeah, just, I think it's probably just going to be five, like you see in a lot of Protoss versus Zergs. Ooh, the Scourge with the... Oh, almost gets the connection there. And the Scourge right now just trailing the Zealots, making sure that they don't get uh, sneakily, or don't sneak somewhere where they can pop some drones unknowingly. Yep, there's about those five Muta. It almost seemed like actually four, so... Probably use them as distractors and get a bunch of scourge to kill down these there, but we have a lot of Sair. I think we're at already six. And I'm not sure why we're moving these cells across again when we know that there's a lot of lings and yeah. the Muta. Speed kicks in though, so he will save the majority of them. But yeah, if he was to lose these five, that would be upwards of like 12 zealots that got killed off for very minimal gains and that's just that's just giving up so much map control to hero that he would probably just power up to infinity like going to seven or eight hatch like he did last game we do have the sair count very high now i like the cannon positioning at the natural and the main so muta shouldn't do damage this time around but as i say that there they go yep yeah, well same thing as last time the five six muta and then the mass scourge we'll see if ken be to micro these say are pretty good he's backing up to try to clump up those Scourge, but he's gonna have to go, man. We can't wait forever. Good job from him there. Ooh. Oh. Those Scourge got mowed down in the Mutas this time around. Yes, they maybe got a couple probes, but really not that much damage. And he lost a lot of Scourge there for, I think, one Corsair. So that was a great trade for Bisu. Yeah, Bisu should be feeling good. I mean, he had to make the Archon. I guess he wanted to make sure he lived. Uh, he needs to be careful with this move out because there are a ton of Hydra already. He wasn't on mass Mutas Scourge where you can sometimes catch them with the Zealot move out, like in the Archon. He has Hydra, he's transitioning into 5 6 has Hydra. We gotta make sure we don't get caught on the map with these units, because if they die, we will be contained forever. Yeah, this is our entire army, <laughs> because we've lost so many Zealots. We've got an Archon trying to move into the third base, but that's not gonna get any damage done. We do have the DT that I've been waiting for all series long, and it does get spotted though, so here's gonna be aware that it is out on the map. Yeah, we need to store him ASAP. He doesn't have it. He, he built, or he used his first two Templars to make an Archon, and he's losing so many Zealots. That's a big hit from the Archon, but the Archon still dies. Yeah, and the stairs don't attack down, so we may see the end of Bisu here. Yeah, there's not that many Zealots. Those are fresh Templars, so he needs like 20 more seconds for the energy. But Hero's not going to wait for him to get that energy. Look at how fast the Zealots have already died. He's on top of the cannons. First one's going to fall. We've got a probe pull. Second one's going to fall. But he doesn't have anything to drill on. So the probes are just getting eaten up by these Hydras. Oh, no. No, I could not like this. Not like this. Uh, the Templar, look at it. You're just, you feel so helpless. You're like, man, just regen the energy. I need you right now. Oh my goodness, good dodge from Hero. We only have one more storm left, what are we gonna do? Well, he's gotta use it. He can't just sit there and lose the Templar. He at least does get it off. The Sairs are trying to buy time supply blocking Hero, and he actually might do it, he did do it. So this is all that Hero has. The problem is that there's not any cannons here to help support these Zealots. We gotta pump, man, pump uh, as many units as we can, get that Archon, pull the boys. Have to hold. Yeah, you gotta Come hold. Come on, Bisu, hold the line, man. Oh, the Archon falls. The Corsairs did so much damage, but in the end, there's just too many Hydras. Oh my goodness, uh, just 
so difficult. Oh. Here for Beast 2, I think he's just collecting his thoughts. Yep. He knows that it is over. You can see it. He just sat back in his chair. It's sinking in now. There it is. GG. And that means one of the fan favorites is going to be eliminated. And that gives us five Zergs in the round of eight. Oh, man. Five Zergs. A lot of ZVZ. Unbelievable. Yeah. Sad for Bisu, man. I wanted to see him go through, but Hero played really well. He transitioned extremely well, pulled out all the stops, made Zerglings when he needed it, droned up when he knew that he could do it, and then just overpowered Bisu both games. Yeah, he made all the better decisions. Like the Zealot harassment, I think, was an okay idea, but every time he went out, he just didn't trade effectively. Like he lost seven Zealots with the initial one, then he lost five more, and then he moved out again with that small Zealot Archon, and then even those got picked off relatively fast. fast. Also, the Archon died. So every time mo he moved out, he really got punished, and Hero, he really did deserve to win that series because he just flat out played better. And getting out in second place, well, I would say that's kind of a better scenario for him because I think the players that actually got second overall <laughs> are a little bit stronger or... In my opinion, they are, but, you know, there's a reason they got first this season. Maybe they're uh, actually better than I was expecting. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe he threw those games to mind. He was like, you know what? I'm going gonna, gonna to get second place so I don't got to play ZVZ with Ashen, Queen, or Silky. Yep. And, you know, actually, the, the whole... What's the word? The entire Protoss race is now relying on Best. Do you think he's got what it takes to go the distance? Oh, man. I mean, he pulled it out out of a tough group yesterday. But, I mean, these are some of the biggest ZVP killers in the world here, man. Like, you know, we look at action. When you look at Queen, right? Like, Soul Key. These are the Zergs he's probably going to hit. And that's a difficult task for PVZ, I think. Especially against someone like Queen, who is insane. Just absolutely crazy on that lair, Hydra Lurk, mid-game, run you over. Uh, I'll be rooting for best, but he definitely, I think, has an uphill battle. Yeah, I remember when 973 was a new thing zero was just saying well if you open stargate you're dead <laughs> and i was like wow that's quite the statement where protoss is in the dark and if they just happen to build this building that they've been building for years upon years they're just outright dead we have come to learn that that's of course not the case but yeah queen a killer in zvp you know actually the matchup i want to see the most is i want to see soul key versus best and the reason i say that is when i watch soul key often he plays low econ he plays differently from the other zergs and i love how he explodes from that low econ if you ever think that you're just all you have to do is to d defend to win no 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 this guy's powering like a madman behind it and he will just simply overrun you yeah, I, I think that's the trickiest state right now of PBZ is just getting as much information you can and making the right decision because Zerg really do control that early tempo of what the game may look like. Are they making tons of Hydra? Are they making tons of Lings? Or are they making drones? And if you choose wrongly, as we kind of saw Bisu did a little bit here, you're just way behind. So, yeah. gotta gather info. Gotta gather info. It's it's really, I know it's all the matchups, but especially in PvZ, how much info can you gather and play the game out and navigate it correctly through the mid-game? Yeah, also something to point out in that series, there was only one DT, and the DT barely got halfway across the map. Like, there was no point in the game where Zerg had to worry about actually getting hit in the back with some DTs that could potentially wipe the drone line. So it was kind of unusual to see Bisu, who's a well-known DT user, not be able to make anything happen with that particular unit. Yeah, not like him. Usually when he gets all those Sarah, that's exactly what he's doing. He's flying around, popping some overlords, getting some DT out there, especially after he kills off the Scourge and the Muta. Um, I wonder if he thought that it was a mass Muta Scourge play, because one of the responses that you do do is make that Archon and take a third base. So, but that delays, as we saw, when you make that base here and that, and that Archon, that delays your Templar tech for a storm. So, 
I wonder if he thought, maybe, hey, this guy's going to mess. You discouraged me this time. Yeah, and he desperately needed that storm. If he had the storm, whether it really connects onto the Hydras very well or not, it at least buys him time to get those cannons all completed. Like, there were, I think the third and fourth one were still being built when Hero actually jumped in there. And if he had those, maybe that could have been the difference maker. But uh, regardless, well done from Hero, and he moves on. And I think we may actually have the group draw immediately after. I can't remember if that happens after this particular group or not. But hopefully we do, and we'll get to see who's going to be facing off versus each other. Yeah, I wonder who's hoping for who. <laughs> well, I can tell you Sock is not hoping for Hero next time. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't happening. want that. He doesn't want that. He's like, I had enough of this already. He got me. I wanted it once. I got what I wanted, and it was too much. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're getting a look at how today went. Of course, Hero taking down Sock, then Mind crushing Bisu, Mind crushing Hero, and then we had Sock unfortunately losing, and then Hero taking down Bisu. And this is our round of eight, as you can see. Star studded lineup. We've got Jadong, fan favorite. JYJ, who's apparently just a mastermind, Terran, best representing the Protoss race. And then we've got Mind, who's been playing out of his mind today. And then at the bottom side in second place, as we talked about all day long, the Killer Zergs, Action, Queen, Soul Key, and Hero. Yeah, man. I mean, you look at that second place spot, you're like, oh my goodness. <laughs> like, what? That's wild. Just absolutely insane. Uh, it's good to see someone like Jadong, man, in the mix, you know, still obviously a legend, um, you know, known for his ZBZ too, right? So he's going to get that in the next round. So that may be a positive for him. Yeah, I think the JVZ era is kind of over with, but his ZBZ is, of course, still top notch. I'm trying to think who would I think he would face off well against in ZBZ. Every time I watch Queen versus Sulky. Queen always has some choice words for Sulky, saying that he doesn't think Sulky's CVC is that great. So, as a Jadong fan, I am hoping that he gets Sulky here because I, I mean, it's not like he can get any other matchup, right? Like, it, it's not like you're praying for him to get Zerg versus Protoss. It's just all Zergs in the bottom side. Yeah, everyone who came in first now knows what their matchup is at least going to be, just a matter of who it is. So. I'm trying to think maybe I think you're right best maybe getting sulky might be the best for him because I feel like Queen and Hero their ZVP is just so strong man I don't know what we could do for best to help him boost into the next uh <laughs> into the round of four what who he wants to get well this is this is my dream selection I want Jadong versus who did I just say sulky I want sulky. JYJ versus Action because I think JYJ was crushing at Terran versus Zerg and I think Action Zerg versus Terran is great. I want to see the rematch of Mind versus Hero. And then even though you don't want to have Best versus Queen, that's what I want. I want to see if Best can take on arguably the best Zerg versus Protoss player. Man, it is Naokin loves Protoss so much. He wants them to get the best yeah. ZVP -er in the world. I want them so all out can... of here. <laughs> Our last hope, our last shining <laughs> light just gets turned off, man. Come on. <laughs> Leave best alone. I think it's interesting because when we went into this ASL, so many Terran qualified. Just so many Terran compared to everyone else, right? Like, you know, 12. And just seven Protoss and nine Zerg. And now here we are going into the round of eight. And we have, what, five Zerg, two Terran, and one Protoss. So yes. of the nine Zerg in it, five have made it through to the final eight. Definitely not bad representation. No, definitely strong. And we are going to have the draw. Yep. And what that is saying is that players that played versus each other earlier will not be able to play versus each other. So my dream scenario of mine versus hero cannot actually happen, for example. And it is going to be one, the one seed versus the two seed. Okay, let's see. Here we go. 
I don't know why they're even showing that banner right there. Isn't this just all Zerg? Here we go. Who's in Group A? <laughs> or first match, I mean. Best, okay. Alrighty. Let's go, best. Okay, mind. <coughs> I think that's so important, right? Because now mind's on the same side as best. Oh, that's true. I didn't consider that. So, Ooh. at least there could be a potential PVT in the round of four. Yeah, that, that would be great. And we do have Jadong on the right side. And then, of course, the last one is going to be JYJ. So Terran have hope for another TVT yeah. final. Exciting. Yeah, I don't want to see them eliminate each other in the semifinals if we get that. So that's that's fantastic. All right, here we go. Best. Who's Not he going to get? No queen. Not queen. We're, we're praying, <laughs> praying no queen. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Ooh, that's what you wanted, oh. man. This is it. Yay, we, we thought this would be the best matchup for him, right, Solki? Yeah, I think this could be good. Wait, did they play in the? They played in the last round. Oh, they round. played. They, they can't be together. Oh. They, no, no, no. Queen, queen, show me queen. Oh, action. Okay. okay. Alrighty. Who'd you want for mind? Oh, you wanted the, re the rematch. Not yeah, possible. It's not possible. So. Not queen. Put him on the other side of the bracket. <laughs> okay. So that only leaves Sulky left, man. That's it. She didn't work out. I have a feeling that so you knew it had to be. You had. Wait. Oh, it's Hero. Oh, they played versus each other. <laughs> okay. No good. Uh oh. Why put him back in there? Don't pick him again. Oh, she can't. She can't open it. You know what that means? It's got to be Queen. <laughs> you knew it had. To oh be. man, Queen coming in hot. <laughs> okay. These two Zerg should be happy, right? They're not going to play Zerg versus Zerg right away and have to do it the entire time. I guess no one has to the entire time because of the uh, Terran and Protoss kind of got split up all over because of them being actually different. Oh, Hero. Okay, that's going to be a, a good matchup between him and Jadong. And that means, of course, we're going to have Soul Key versus JYJ. That should be a pretty good matchup for JYJ. Yeah, I like that one. Potential for JYJ to only play TVZ all the way through to the final. <laughs> That's true. I mean, he could, yeah, he can even play TVZ in the final potentially. Yep. So that's our bracket. This is pretty damn good. I'm excited for all these games. I wish Action had gotten JYJ or mine for a TVZ because I think he's the best versus Terran, but regardless, this is pretty freaking hype. Yeah, this is some serious games here. I mean, we're getting down to the final eight. I mean, you know, all these players are insane, and I feel like we have, I feel like we have a good mix-up of a little bit of surprises too, right? Like, Jadon making it through, and uh, Mind, so you got some players in there, I think that kind of still, like we said, the dark horse of Mind in the beginning of today, kind of pushing it through, and still has a good chance. We saw him play really well, so. Yeah, and just something to note here is, again, the day, you know, it was Wednesday, Thursday last week, today, or this week it was Tuesday, Wednesday, and now we're going to Monday, Tuesday. So definitely keep that in mind. You don't want to miss any of these games because they're going to be very exciting. And then I also noted, I think at the finals is actually on a Friday, which is also interesting scheduling because you would expect the finals to actually be on a weekend. But regardless, um, that is the actual schedule. So keep that in mind so you don't miss anything. And if you do... You can always check our channel on YouTube. It's the StarCast TV channel. We have all the VODs there, and you should check it out if you are interested in replaying any of these exciting series.
Yeah, I don't want to miss any of these matches. These are going to be just absolutely fantastic. It's just going to be the best stuff. Best StarCraft anywhere. Well, was there anybody that impressed you so far? I, I mean, today mine was very impressive. I thought he was extremely solid. And, I mean, obviously he threw away that one with the BBS attempt, but at least he showed he has it in him to go for it. So you can't just expect him to play standard every game going into the round of eight. Um, so he's been very impressive. And I, I would also say JYJ from his games the other day were very, very, very impressive. I thought he was extremely solid as well. Yeah, I agree. I think those two players in particular really surprised me. Like, you know, I don't know what I was really expecting from Mind or JYJ, but they absolutely blasted those expectations. And then, as you can see again, not this week, but the week after, it's going to be our third and fourth round of eight matches again on Monday and Tuesday. Jadong versus Hero. That's going to be an exciting matchup for sure. Hero's very good at all the races or all the matchups. I remember in his profile, what was he, 60% across the board. So he's not really lacking in like anything really. Yeah, it'd definitely be great. I mean, uh, I'm ex I mean, I think I look at back at some of the matches as well, like Soul Key taking out Light the other day. So he's no slouch ZBT either right now. So. Yep, and if we do have JYJ make it out of his group, we'll get to see Hero again play another, or potentially see Hero again play another Zerg versus Terran. I would like to see that because he just picked apart Sock today, like really hard. And he had good builds versus mine, but mine's timings were a little bit too difficult to overcome but jyj he's got a fearsome opponent here soul key he's very strong also versus Terran. he's also very clever as i pointed out in previous casts there was a game in, in ksl where i think it was sharp he scanned the natural saw soul key had like three drones and thought that soul key was all inning actually soul key had taken a third base and just transferred all his workers there so this guy's clearly a brain zerg and very very dangerous in that particular matchup yeah he's going to be a strong opponent here for jyj um but jyj like we said no slouch of his own has been impressive took out queen so we think we will be in good shape for some crazy matches yeah this was at least for me the breakout season for jyj in a different matchup other than Terran versus protoss in previous seasons i remember him taking out bisu and I was like, wow, his CVP is actually really solid. But I don't think I'd ever seen him be as dominant as he was in TVZ until this season. So he's a real threat potentially to go the distance here. But Raz, I think we are done with the cast pretty soon. How did it go? How did it compare to BSL? Uh, I mean, it's 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 awesome. This is a great thing to do. It's really fun. I'm glad you guys had me out for today. Hopefully, there'll be some room in the future to do it again. But, uh, I mean, ASL is just a top tier. To see these games is just so amazing because you know this is the actual top of the pyramid when it comes to Brood War. You know? And we love the Hot 6 commercials. I mean, of you, course. You know, we, yes. we love those. Yes. Well, I appreciate you feel, filling in for me. Uh, for Eon Zerg because I was I was going through the list in my mind. I'm like, well, who can I actually ask that will wake up at five in the morning or <laughs> two in the morning to cast ASL? So you really came in clutch here. Uh, you know, I asked Doc Holiday, but that's just so so early, and I was like struggling. I'm like, do I really ask Machine? Because I know Machine will say yes, but I would feel so bad <laughs> if he's waking up at like one thirty in the morning. You know. He'll do it and not sleep all night. He'll make it happen <laughs> <Yeah>. for you. <laughs> then go to work. Well, I do appreciate you taking off. And, of course, chat always appreciates getting some Protoss insight. You know, that was one of the feedbacks in all previous ASL casts I've done is, where are the Zerg casters? Where are the Protoss casters? And Ian Zerg has been doing a really good job this season also. Yeah, we like his Volturs. Yeah, the Volturs. We like this. Good unit. Voltur is a good unit. <laughs> Well, right now we are just waiting for the signal. It looks like Caster Park also looking for the signal into the rain. <laughs> He's just constantly looking at the camera, man. <laughs> uh, man, I like the uh, the hot six with the zero there. A little BSL shout out, I guess, for, for Mr. Oh, zero. Yeah. 
Zero took a screenshot of it and posted it to me <laughs> in the BSL channel, I think. Uh, but maybe we can talk about you a little bit before we go. We've got that Ascension tournament that Artosis talked about. You going to be playing in that? Yeah, I think we're going to give it a shot. I mean, it'll be, for someone like me, hard to qualify in the top three protists. But uh, I'll give it a shot and play, you know. Don't play as much as I like to, but why not? we got we got to support these big events out here in Brood War and definitely want want to mix it up but, but what about you we know you don't always play in all the events is that something you're gonna play in i guess if it's if it's just top three for each race i mean i might as well play right because there's me gypsy terror and then dandy <laughs> who else is there is there anybody else that plays terran i don't think it, no one else wants to play that hard uh <laughs> hard stuff out no one wants to play terran man it's too tough it's too difficult yeah, well, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back next week with our round of eight. It's going to be exciting games. And remember, it's going to be on Monday. So definitely don't forget that. And we'll see you there.